Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Hey, hey, hey. Stay busy, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sather, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. I'm, of course, your host, head honcho, vegan chorizo poppy, founder of BNB, a.k.a. the Ball nigga bombshell has entered the podcast studio. I mean, <clears throat> your headphones, yeah, bro. your car speaker, your All Bluetooth speaker, your AirPods, your AirPod Pros, your AirPod Maxes. You might have Bose headphones. I don't <clears throat> know whatever type of headphones you have. You might be listening to me off the phone from the phone speaker, but... I'm in your ear, pause, um, <laughs> okay. and I go by Chine Du, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. or the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks <laughs> and never tell a lie, Armand Sather. I'm here with my guy, uh, Miss Two Bees is gone, but Will is here, Mr. Are You Sure, a.k.a. Apple Music's finest, okay. a.k.a. <laughs> Mr. It Gets Biblical, <clears throat> a.k.a. Where There's a Will, There's a Way. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. You know, uh, it's kind of different up here right now, but it's tight. Well, how's it different? Uh, I mean, I think we're missing somebody, but we got some, <laughs> we got somebody new though. No shout to Ed, you know, man, you know, I miss her. Always love two bees. Yeah, and we, we we'll made sure that um in her in her steed is it steed stead steed I think I'm gonna say steed. It might be stead, but in her stead, one Brooklyn member couldn't make it, but we got somebody else from Brooklyn. This is you, if you've been listening to the pod from season <laughs> one or season two, whatever season you jumped in, he is no stranger to the show, and he is often referenced. Mm-hmm. Mr. Dodzy knows best, mm-hmm. aka DKB, mm-hmm. aka the multi talented gentleman. You mm-hmm. see him hooping on IG. You see him yes. managing artists. You see him graphic design and you see him taking the photo camera out you see him doing it all like this brother does it all but he somehow he had time for us (laughs) (laughs) fresh off vacation (laughs) he had time for us and i'm very thankful for him none other than my brother one of my favorite guests to bring on the show kojo dazi is here welcome to the show i'm here y'all the family's in the building man what's up what's up how you feeling bro I feel amazing, actually, man. You definitely caught me at a great time. Mm-hmm. Fresh off vacation. I feel really re- recharged, refreshed. So, Where's you got to go? Cabo? I know. I was in Puerto, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I okay. was in Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, but yeah, nah, you caught me at a perfect time, man. I feel great. I'm mm-hmm. um, ready to finish the year strong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know we, we we discussed me coming on the pod uh, recently, so it's yeah. just ironic how this happened. But I yeah, feel man. like it's perfect, perfect timing, bro. So Absolutely. Thank you for, you know. Get me on my seat, Miss Two Bs. I'm gonna do you right. <laughs> I know me and Eb. You know we. I love her so much. I've known her for so long, and we we bump heads yeah. in the most loving way. Yeah. And so I'm 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 hope I'm hope that I could you know do her justice today. You got so. it, man. You got <laughs> it. And I'm uh, finishing the year strong. And I'm, I'm we need to actually acknowledge and educate the people. Quarter four starts in October. Absolutely. So there are twelve months in the year. <laughs> do the math. <laughs> so. Each quarter is three months. Uh-huh. So when you niggas tweet quarter four in September, yeah. that's that actually the final crazy. third yeah. of the year. Because that is the ninth month. They trying to make you feel bad, gang. Like they're trying, they're, they're I trying to no, no, like... No, I don't get why. Well, like, that's what every people be year, doing, bro. No, but the thing is, every year we correct them. Well, not me, but it gets corrected. <laughs> do, like, nah, not yet. Not yet. And every year... As soon as September first hits, oh Q four, Q four, no, nigga, no, bro, it is, it is the, the third, third. <laughs> That's them rising, sh- them rising, shining, grind ass, like, yeah, which is bro, cool, like, <laughs> but just get it right. Yeah, they just eager, man. It's just okay. like yo, it's yo you just only like, got twenty four hours in a day, and, you, and you're not using your twenty four hours <laughs> right. properly. If you don't know right. what a qu- the difference between a quarter and a third is, word, word, so word. we are we are what is to- today's October fourteenth, fourteenth. Yeah. Well, when this episode drops, it'll be right. the six, whatever it is. We are in midway through the fourth quarter now. It's the fourth quarter now. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit just okay. because our chat topic, I think, will just kind of be a good uh, alley oop to what our um, what our board meeting is going to be. So we're actually going to start with our lunch break today where we discuss what's happening in the sports world. Perfect for Kojo, who is here. Yes. Uh, let's start with the WNBA Finals. The New York Liberty and the Minnesota Lynx are in the right. WNBA Finals. Uh, did you watch game one, Will? Yes. 
classic, one of the best classic basketball games basketball. I've ever watched yes. in my Real life. Real hoops. <laughs> and like, yes. again, I, I admit I'm, I'm new to WNBA. I've only been watching for like two years. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know the classic games before I started watching. I'm, I'm not familiar with them. Oh, there's like, a ton. You be locked I'm, I'm in, sure. though. Yeah. You be locked in. You Super be locked in. I love it. I like, love yeah. it. Like, yeah, like I've, I, I fell in love with it very I heard fast. a rumor that you was the mascot. Oh, you think I, I'm Ellie? You big Ellie? I'm not Ellie. I, I can tell you that I I don't have the, the aura or the charisma. Uh, that, I'm just kidding. Y'all got the dance moves. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't <laughs> got it like that. No, shout out to Ellie though. It's Ellie's crazy lit. how big she is, bro. Like I'm not talking about like in size, not, in, in, not in Ellie popularity. Or, <laughs> yeah, or like, like everything else. At like, the last WNBA All Star weekend, like Ellie was a star of the show. Bro, like, Ellie what? was out there. But shout out to Ellie. Yeah. God damn that game one that we watched, man. It like was amazing. I had that on. I had MLB playoffs. I had Thursday night football. Great, great, and it got to sports. Absolutely. Like this this time of the year, NBA is about to start. Like we're in such a like for men, well, girlfriends, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sit on the couch with your man, make him some snacks, help yeah. him with his parlays. But on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays, college Saturdays. football on Saturdays, <laughs> college football on yeah. Saturdays, baseball so, is like, I'm yeah. sorry. Like, yeah. like we locked in. Just Pick a team. Like, f f fall in love with the sport with us. But <laughs> it got to a point where I was only watching the WNBA <laughs> game because mm. it was just so fucking good. Like, Intense, Courtney yeah. Williams, mm. clutch baskets. Mm. Nafisa Collier, incredible. Mm. She's, she's a dog. Um, the, the the great thing about the Liberty this year is I feel like last year it was primarily Stewie and Sabrina leading mm -hmm. the show. For sure. This year there have been games where it's like, yo, John, John Quell might be the best yeah, player JJ's on the team. Tough. But Nigel might be the best player right. on the team. And we're seeing it in the playoffs. Like at, at different games, they're all like the leading scorer. Like it's it's so great you know, to see. The X Factor on the Liberty is Feebish. Feebish too. As yeah. a rookie, she came in, you Smoking know, it. and like it's like she's always around, mm -hmm. like always around, yeah. always making a, a, a correct play defensively yeah. and offensively. I really, I really, I love how balanced the Liberty ha, uh, have become and they've grown. I think them getting them getting that disappointment last year yeah. against the Aces really it lit a fire under them. And yeah, you seeing it now, but they did they pissed that game away. It, so yeah, it was, like, it, was, like, it hurt to watch. Ooh. It was such good basketball, but yeah. obviously with my my fandom was like, fuck, yeah, 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 damn. Yeah. Like but they were up what sixteen with like five minutes yeah, left. Like yeah, they nasty. dominated throughout the most of the game. So it was nasty. Really that away, but yeah. you know, I think that's great for the game. A mm -hmm. game like that is great for the game. You know, yeah. uh, the Liberty continually set, setting uh, te uh, attendance records yeah. in Trust. the Barclays. That's Trust. their building. You yeah. know, because uh, the other team that plays there is useless. Oh, God. <laughs> so, you Yo. know, so it's great that that's happening yeah. in there. Yo. You know, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. Bro. No, I mean, I mean, you're you're hundred percent you're you're hundred percent right. You know what's crazy, bro, is it's amazing to watch how you just kind of just said it. Watch um, like our girlfriends fall in love with sports. It's crazy watching women and men mm -hmm. fall in love with the WNBA. Bro, right it's now. amazing. It's it, 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 it special. You debate times. about it. On yeah, these it's platforms. like yeah. I'm like I can't believe it. Every time I, I'm like, bro, people are like, my niggas are really talking yeah. about WNBA, and it's yeah. like I'm not mad at it. It's just it's amazing, bro. It's 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 it's, it's a amazing. culture shock. It's, it's definitely fire. a culture shock. Um, it's fire. And it's it's definitely been annoying a bit, all the Caitlin Clark yeah, stuff. But it's like mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is what happens when mm -hmm. you're a legitimate sport that people are invested in. You're gonna get these bad faith takes and right. everyone wants to have a have an opinion on it now. So it's uh, you know, you take the good with the bad, yeah. but uh, what a great game. Game two, they won by like 14, so shout out to that. Series yeah. is tied up. Now they're going back to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I saw one of the like uh, Liberty beat writers, uh, Miles, Miles Ehrlich, I think his name is. They set another attendance record for game two to right. the point they had to sell standing room only tickets mm -hmm. for niggas. I'm like, yeah. damn, bro. Like, I wouldn't want to be standing in the Barclays to watch the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you got to give me a seat. But just goes to show like how like this team's really got New York like surrounding them and got their arms around yeah, them. Yeah, I was so. I was at game two of the series with the Aces. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to I had to really I had to see Asia Wilson up close. I had oh, never special. seen it before. It's and special. I was mm -hmm. she turned the switch on in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. She's trying to will this team to like back mm -hmm. to prominence. I'm watching her like yeah. go from I am chilling to like, all right, this is why I'm the best player in the world. Yeah. It was so beautiful to see. But, you know, the Liberty still how, ended up winning that stuff. So. How tall is she, if I may ask? You, you guys, I mean, uh, I could look it up. Yeah, I've never stood next to her. On, she looks about 6'4, six, 6'5. Six, that's five, what I was bro. about to say. And she too. moves so quickly. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You know? I was about to say probably 6'4. 6'4, six, four, six, four, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like mm -hmm. the, the mid range is just, it's automatic for her. It's, it looks so smooth, so effortless. Yeah, like, she a lefty. You know, lefties kind of have un unorthodox games, yeah. but she, it's so smooth. Baby. Yeah. So I, you know, I rock you know who's crazy. Um, Y'all mentioned her. Uh, I forgot her name. I'm sorry. I think it's number twenty four for Minnesota. Oh, Nafisa College. Yeah, yeah. Yes, bro. She's and they tough. said like they said she had 
She said that she had a baby and got better. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, she, she went like, yeah. I mean, kind of like Candace Parker, too. Like, yeah, man. No, real shit. Bounce back after the birth I mean, of bro, yeah, that's man. why I think, you know, yeah. It's yeah, like, different motivation. You got a mouth to feed. <laughs> bro, bro, it's, it's it, and, and like, I feel like sometimes people look at that and they might think it's like funny or whatever, mm-hmm. but like, that's the nuance of the WNBA yep. game that makes it kind of special and different. It that's is. like, yeah. okay. That happened, and then she came back better. Right. Like, okay. there's no other basketball league that's get. Well, yeah, obviously, and there's. Yeah. I mean, the WNBA, you're gonna get girlfriends and wives on the same <laughs> court. Yeah. Like, you're gonna get exes. Like, you're yeah. gonna get pregnant women who bouncing back. Or you know, what I mean, like it's 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 it's. So it's like cool. I'm watching new age baseball. Like the like the fake like you know how baseball has hella, hella like unwritten nuanced rules and stuff. It's mm-hmm. like it's like that of me falling in love and like watching a sport and just be like, okay, yeah. they do this or they do this different or this different like that type of stuff. That stuff makes sports special and it makes different sports special from each other. So. Yeah, you get really invested in the storylines. Like, mm-hmm. Brianna Stewart and Nafisa were teammates at UConn. Mm-hmm. So, and Gino like, was at the game um, as well, watching yeah. their coach. So That's it's hard. good to see because I know he he he, he ships them out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and every every three cool. years or so, he's, he's sending out a bunch of players over to, to the WNBA. So I know he's proud. Yeah. You know, he's kind of like Coach Calipari on the, on the boys' side. So yeah, yeah. It's dope to see, for sure. Well, what y'all think about this series? How, how's it ending? I want it to end in Minnesota. I don't need it coming back for game five. <laughs> but if it does, I'll, I'll try my best to be there. Yeah. Um. But I definitely want them to wrap it up because I, I at the end of the day, I still think that the Liberty have been the best team all year long. Yeah. And but, but they Minnesota, struggle with the links. Yes, they do. And yeah. every team has their matchup. And yeah. I think this is a proven case. Mm-hmm. Um. But still, at the end of the day, I think every, all 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 cylinders are clicking right now. And if Nod is going to play like the way she played um, in game two, and she's going to put up, maybe not 20 every night, because I know she's still uh, nursing that knee injury. You know, if she's playing and she's locking up like we like we like like she's there for, mm-hmm. I think we'll wrap it up in Minnesota, actually. So What was, um, if I may ask, what was uh, Minnesota seed? Uh, they're second. They're yeah. Second. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're good. They're good. Yeah, this, very was the matchup. this was this was the matchup and, okay. and it, it was tough because it was like the aces struggled a lot they had injuries but mm-hmm. you, you couldn't count them out back-to-back right. champs like yeah. so when when i saw that the liberty had to face them in the semifinals I was like Phew. yo what, what do you feel about the seating uh or the way the wmba does the seating where they don't break it up by conference and they do it by best record <sighs> i don't love it mm-hmm. um but i think it's just because what i'm used to yeah, is right. it used being broken up so yeah. it's been an adjustment but yeah. You you get some fun matchups like you get yeah. Liberty Aces in the semifinals like right. that's that was a finals matchup last year it's like oh shit right. um, but it also kind of fit what was happening this year like the Liberty were the clear best team the mm-hmm. Aces were struggling but fought their way to get you know into they were fourth seed this year so yeah. they fought their way there so it was like it kind of made sense but yeah I think <clears throat> just because I'm used to it being broken up um, it's like it's weird but you know it's whatever it, it works for them um, but yeah it's been been super fun. It? How do I feel about the the speech, the seating? Because that's an interesting question. I think it's cool mm. because um, there. I mean, the league is smaller, mm-hmm. um, and because of yeah. that, Lost you know, it just it 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 it's it's, it's kind of just a magnifying glass on who is the best in this league right yeah. now, and this is how it's broken down. It's not West Coast, East Coast. It's just yeah. like these are the top teams, and this is how they 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 broke it down. Yeah. Um, and you know, we get to see Caitlin Clark fight her way into the playoffs and as a as a rookie, you know, mm-hmm. and we get to see her play against, mm-hmm. you know, the Connecticut Sun who have always been a top team. And mm-hmm. then, you know, it's just I mean, look at it. It ended up being East versus West in the final, so yeah. it don't really matter. <laughs> but you know, it, it, I think I think it, it's perfect because it just shows, okay, this is the top dog, this is the bottom half of it, and you know, mm-hmm. made the best woman win. So yeah. I, I, I like it. Yeah, I'm excited for these new teams to join. We got the Golden State Valkyries coming up. Yeah, um, we got the expansion team in Toronto. I think and the Portland team. Portland, I believe, right? yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the next one. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be fire. Shout out to the W. Man. They're growing, man. Shout out they, to the W. They, and didn't they just say they're about to go to seven game series? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, the like playoff, they're not playoff they're format not, will be three, yeah, five, bro. seven for the yeah, first round. It's expanding, bro. Yeah, um, I, I think they could get rid of the, get a, get rid of the three. Either, yeah, but probably. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind it if you do five, five, seven. Cool. Yeah, that would be actually perfect. I think actually. So, yeah, that's the WNBA. NBA, um, <clears throat> I wanted to speak to Brother Kojo about this particularly. He's been uh, very passionate about it on the timeline. Uh, the New York Knicks, they broke up the the, the Nova Knicks clan. Jalen Brunson, Dante <laughs> oh DiVincenzo, God. Josh Hart, uh, Bridges, and yeah. they sent DiVincenzo and Randall, and Randall. to Don't Minnesota Randall. Yeah. for Carl Anthony Towns. Big purr. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the bodega cat. My guy. <laughs> Big bodega cat. That's fire. That's is my... it, did you make that up? No, no, no. Oh, God. I've been seeing it on social media. I was like, yo, right whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this nigga, who is this nigga? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, that's, people, the, that's in the culture right there. People was quick with it, too. Yeah, like, within okay, an hour bad, of him bad, getting traded. Big bodega cat. That's hard. So for me, it was like, when I saw they got bridges, was like, Yo, healthy Knicks with Randall, all of them. Like, mm-hmm. they were a game away from the Eastern Conference Finals Absolutely. last year. With at full power, adding bridges, I think this team can give the Celtics a big scare in, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Right. They trade Randall, they mm-hmm. trade DiVincenzo, you get Cat. On paper, to a lot of people, it's it's a better situation. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think the whole thing is how the chemistry will play out right. and if Cat will show up. He put up a lot of stinkers in the playoffs last year. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Um, I'm locked in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always tell people, uh, for me, it's front of the jersey. I still, I do have emotional connections to my players on my team. Uh, I remember when RJ and Quickly got traded. Yeah, I was very, very emotional. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I kind of was like, I was done with RJ at that point. <laughs> um, but <laughs> not for real. <laughs> but no, nah, it's front of the jersey. I think it's gonna work just fine. I think Tibbs has proven that he gets the best out of his players. Yeah, it's the reason why Hartenstein has a, a multi-million dollar contract in OKC. Real yeah. shit. Um, it's the reason why. People want people. It's the reason why Dante DiVincenzo broke the Knicks. Three, it's it, it's a lot. It starts from the top. Mm-hmm. You know, Leon Rose in, in, the, in the front office, down the Tibbs and and the product that we put onto the floor. So I don't think replacing an All Star with an All Star is a problem, mm-hmm. especially when arguably the All Star that we're bringing in is better than the All Star that we that we're losing. And I love Dante, mm-hmm. and I love. I wanted to see the Nova Knicks. Yeah, I played with it in two K, and I'm like, yeah, this is <laughs> real life. And then. We won't get that chance to see it. Yeah. Um. And I don't know if you saw the the, uh, the preseason game. Yeah. Um, the other night. Shit got a little dicey. Shit got dicey. real because you see how much emotion was within that group. Yeah. Um. Which I love. I love to see that. But then it also shows me that all right. Well, you know, it's time to go to war. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what it is. I mean, they're gonna be brothers forever. Yeah. And for me, I'm gonna be a fan forever. So. You know, I think it's going to work perfectly. I think Cat is an exceptional player. I know the the perception is oh he's soft, he this, he that. All, none of that matters when you're putting up 25 and 10, bro. Oh, God. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just, I don't care how soft he is. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he's going to be surrounded by players who ain't soft. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're going to put their arms around him. His coach ain't soft. The coach in New York ain't soft. We're gonna, by the middle of the season, you're going to see all that soft shit is out the window. Yeah. And if it's not, then we failed. But I doubt we'll fail. So yeah. I'm good at it. Randall, I, I don't think you touched much on Randall. Like for me, I, I, Randall gets a lot of hate. Uh-huh. And it was like last year before he got hurt, he was averaging... 24, 9, and he's 6, I think. So it was just like, yeah. like well, what do niggas hate about Randall? Is it like maybe that I'm, he's... I'm, it, Will's right. It's not... and It's not. It's, the, it's, it's just not aesthetically pleasing. And he said right. it. It just doesn't look... It just does right. not look good. Right. It's frustrating the shots that he misses. and the shot he, It's similar to Russell, Russell Westbrook. Okay. Russell Westbrook's an NBA legend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but his game is... It's not, it's not the prettiest. You right. know, his turnovers are loud and ugly. You know, but... Uh, with Randall, you know, he's 100% forever going to be, to me, a top seven, top eight Nick of all time. Mm. I, I know it, you got you to gotta think about what he's done in this time, what mm-hmm. he's accomplished as an individual player. And I know his playoff performance has always been the Achilles heel for him in New York. I'm not mad at, I'm not mad but, at that. But, like, that. I think about what he was able to do as for himself. Yeah. He was a huge part of that that and, rebuild, rebuild and renaissance. And if people are saying that this is the best Knicks team in X amount of years, it's because he was able to change the culture cultural or start builder, the change. Cultural builder. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's so crazy, bro. Like, I really have became, like, a Knicks fan just living here. Mm-hmm. And that just, I feel like that just kind of, like, happens. Like, it's definitely happened to Yankee. We're, we're, glad you, to, we're glad to have you, man. Sorry. <laughs> I went to a Yankee game, and I, that, like, how we was kind of talking before, you went to the to the, the Atlantic. I went to the Yankee game, and mm-hmm. that shit was so crazy. I was like, Change okay. Life? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Yankee nuts. Stadium is so nice. I was like, yo, this is different. And then, like, mm-hmm. I live in Harlem, so I could, like, see the stadium from, like, my house. I was dope, like, dope. it's like a Disney movie or some shit. <laughs> but, like, the Knicks, the Knicks are so... They're so legendary on a level that, like, I, that you have to, like, live here to, like... Right. You get to live here for, like, five to seven years to really understand, bro. Yeah. And to see... I remember, I, like, I was literally getting arguments last year about, about Brunson, how cold he is. Like, that man is... Uh, he, he said we overpaid, Armand. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went and took a pay cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like come on, like, <laughs> yeah. like like come on. Yeah, so like I, I'm fully invested, especially like after was that last night or whatever that 
DiVincenzo guy with his daddy. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, last yeah. night, yeah. Yeah, I was like, so like now I'm like fully like, okay, like what's going on? Like you said, like now it's time to go to war. Right, yeah. Like, okay, you talking to my daddy. Like what's going on? No, no, no. no. That was, they, their friendship and brotherhood is not is not in question there. They're always yeah, going to be friends. Yeah. And they said that. Yeah. Like, ah, the, the problem that the, those two grown men have are between each other. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> I want to know what's going on between those two grown men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I want to yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. what, like... <sighs> Like, is his daddy really running the team? Like, nah, and nah. stuff like that? Is it like, I just want to know what the issue is. Yeah. But yeah, I'm fully invested. I think the Knicks going to be fine. I'm Cass locked in, cool. man. I wish, I wish Dante and Drew the best over there in Minnesota. Yeah, they nice. got a great team over there. I love Anthony Edwards. He's the face of the league. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to see. I hope we meet him in the, in the finals, to be honest. Like, that that's would. my ideal dream <laughs> is to watch us go to head-to-head -head with Minnesota Seriously. in the finals. That'd be a crazy storyline. Oh, man. my God. It'd be crazy. Beautiful. Like, Tibbs, Tibbs is another Tibbs old team mm -hmm. against us in the Garden. Seven-game series. Anthony Edwards trying to come at, you know, JB. Like, that's what I want to see. So, yeah. mm. so you it. think that would be you think that would be a better fight? Like, yeah, I guess. I guess. Ain't uh, nobody out west I really want to see, man. You wouldn't, like, like, I think Dallas, Dallas had a nice little run last year, it, but... It, I mean... That's what the NBA wants. I might I might get in trouble for this. I don't know how people feel about him, but it would be nice to see LeBron get there one more time and Knicks put Absolutely. a stake through his heart oh, wow. one last time. Right. Hey, I ain't mad at that either, dog. <laughs> Gangsta, I can't lie to you. The league wanted to. Yeah, bro. New York and, LA. Oh, what? That's, that's box that office. would be that's box office, office sure. boy. Yeah, yeah, and then... Psh, them price, Knicks them, win a tie. Them oh garden God. prices. You, know, yeah, you think yeah. they bad now? Be a thousand oh, my, oh my God. God. Yeah, bro. Trying to go to the garden right now. sitting 300 for, for four racks, bro. bro. It's insane, yeah. bro. It's insane. Doesn't make no sense. So we shall see a lot of interesting storylines coming up for the NBA. Um, all right. We are a music podcast. So we, we're going to jump into this music stuff now. Um, Summer Walker. So funny Kojo is here. We can talk about Summer Walker and how people think we hate her. Um, <laughs> Yo, shout out to my guy Nick, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Nick. Love you, brother. I was just talking to him earlier. Uh, she announced her next album, Finally Over It, mm -hmm. is coming. It has been three years since yes, she dropped yes, an LP. Yes. It's been, she dropped her EP, uh, Clear, Clear, Clear Two, two. Yeah, Clear last two. year. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we got something from her, but I, right. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been ready for another Summer Walker so album. So ready, bro. She is definitely, I mean, undeniably one of the standout women in R&B right mm -hmm. now. Um, loyal ass fan base, constantly breaking records. Um, locked just, in, y'all. Just one of those really great songwriters, mm -hmm. um, and I think you know she's she's been away. She's done some features and stuff, but she's let the other women cook. But kind of like when SZA dropped, like it's time for you know one of the top dogs to come back and be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what y'all did was nice, but it's it's time for me to pop back out. Right. And it's cool to see her continuing the series of over it, still mm -hmm. over it, finally over it. We love like, the theme, man. So you know we're just gonna get some very like emotional vulnerable and that's always what she does right. like just some very honest songwriting i think that's why she has the women in the chokehold that she has them is like she's just so open will you rock with someone i do uh, i just gotta check i do you know, we gotta check my <laughs> I, do, I do i do i do i do I, I might not listen to her like everybody else mm -hmm. or like be super locked in but i can like it from afar and she's one of those artists that like like you said her pen is so good it's and like great. she's just yeah. like a real she's like a real artist like yeah. She's crazy, unfortunately, sometimes. <laughs> well, actually, not unfortunately. It's just real life. Like, that's what happened. Like, that's like, the it's story, just, man. That, that's like, just art, yeah, man. It's just A lot art, of these like, artists be doing dumb shit. Yeah, bro. It's like, it's okay. Like, nobody's perfect. And yeah. she doesn't try to come off as perfect, which I fuck with. You know, she might have some questionable moments, might not. But the music's always <laughs> fire, so it's like... Yeah. Yo, you know what I noticed? Well, this is what I mentioned to my homegirl when she was like, yo, uh, summer's coming. And I saw the title was finally over it. I'm, the first thing I said, I was like... Damn, that means she was lying about the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that means she was lying about the first two times. Hey, I thought I mean, you was over it, Summer. Yo, sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> no, that's like, funny. Lying that's ass. Funny. Tell, tell the world, bro, I ain't worried about that nigga no more. <laughs> mm -hmm. back, but, at the back of the crib, you crying over word, him. Like, Christ, stay it. queen ass. Yo, it's it, cool, bro. though. I'm, I'm locked I, I, in. I've been there. I've been there. I've told him, yeah, I'm past her. Yeah, yeah, See her on Instagram with that nigga. I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck you. Spinning been in the block. This nigga mad corny. Keep scrolling through pics. He corny. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But I'm 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 looking forward to it, man. I think um I think it's been a cool year for R and B, but yeah. I I don't wanna I don't wanna say summer is needed in like a dramatic way, mm -hmm. but more like uh You need one of the big dogs. Yes, you exactly. Need the big dog. yeah, exactly. You need the big like dog. it can't be a year without the big dogs. Yeah, like yeah. you know, like let's let's get another major release. Right, right, so, right. you know, I'm and she's I, I, definitely I a big it. dog. Absolutely, you she's know, and I think what, what they do over there at LVRN with the music, as they're they're they're, a, they're an establishment that I trust. Oh yeah, yeah. top and, tier. Um, whenever they deliver, they deliver. So um, 
I'm excited. I've been ducking. The, I've been actually ducking the like the snippets and the and the previews. And yeah, I haven't heard anything because I want it to be a very fresh experience mm -hmm. um, when I do press play on it. So yeah. um, I might not even listen to the single. Ooh, I okay. might try to avoid. I might try to avoid it okay. just so I can get the album in full. But uh, I remember like you know when she dropped still over it mm -hmm. and you know. X for a reason was the first single, and everybody had all these like these judgments for it, and I'm just like, yo, guys, chill, because I I feel like in the sequence of the album it sounds beautiful, but um, you know, I think I'm I'm very 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 I trust a uh, summer, and um, I know they're kind of um, you know, they're not playing the you know the, the Grammy game no more. They well, that's what they said, you know, they kind of yeah. just you know gonna do what they're gonna do mm -hmm. with the music and not really reach for these like accolades and stuff like that. So I think we might get we might get the best music from her possible. That so. was the lead single. Wow, yeah, it was man. I'm looking through that. I'm like, damn, that was a single. Bold choice. Very bold choice. I, I still don't <laughs> because like Because there's the so much heat on there. But, you know, I, yeah. hey, I think JT was kind of bubbling up a little bit at that mm -hmm. time. So it was perfect time, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm right. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready, Summer. You know, I've been you know, I've been tweeting at her like periodically every week. <laughs> like, yo, new music, new music, new music. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. the week, and the one week I didn't. Oh. <laughs> it comes to thing. Oh, my homies was like, Joe, she heard you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like she oh, heard he's you. locked in. Joe's yeah, locked yeah, in. Yeah, I'm sure. locked in. I love that's, that's, that's a real R&B nigga right yeah, there. Real, real R&B. Mm, R&B like, like, is my genre, man. I want to ask you about... Uh, um, Do it. Oh, Do it. Yeah. How you feel about the Leon Thomas album? Oh, <laughs> special. Everybody's special. Every, I, think, I think, honestly, I think it's one of the best moments for music this year. Yeah. Seeing how... Seeing how surprised people one finding out it's him, mm -hmm. yeah, and then two how mm -hmm. good it is, yeah, and yeah, it's like sure. it's like a real ass. It's re the replay value on it is crazy. I was talking to my dog Preach on the timeline about it. Like last week, the best song is no longer the best song because you've just you, you fell in love with another song. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's he got ridiculous. one then. He it's got ridiculous. one. That's my niggas thing doing is that. When yeah. you when you land on an album that you just have to listen to so so much, and mm -hmm. you, your favorite song changes like. That happened with me with Party Mobile, mm -hmm. where like I didn't like Never Again at first, and now like Never Again is one of my favorite songs mm -hmm. just because I listen to the album so much, and yeah. like a different song just hits you at a certain point. You're like, ah, oh, shit, man. Like, yeah. so I it's... found myself trying to gatekeep that uh, Leon Thomas Everybody project. Is. I didn't, I didn't know a lot of people was on it, right? And yeah. I, I don't. Uh, well, I do these every week, every Friday. I, I do my my new pickups, and I probably like put like four albums that I recommend or that I have downloaded that you know people should you mm -hmm. know tap into, and I did not put Leon on that Friday. <laughs> And then I realized that, damn, y'all knew about knew. it. Niggas oh, knew. All right. Niggas I knew. guess. Yo, let's he's, do this. He's, he's one of those, like, known niggas who's not, like, he's not, like, uh, he's obviously not a household name yeah. or, or even, like, someone who may come up in your algorithms a lot. Right. But the shit just spread, like, yeah. organically, like My wildfire. Nigga. Like, I'm yeah. seeing people I didn't even know would have been hip to him talking about. I'm like, oh, shit, wow. When you write you. a song like Snooze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it, it just changes the trajectory of, like, if people kind of just, like, Especially, I feel like a lot of people are like looking for R and B now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like looking for those like, oh, I want to just die for something new and something good. Actually, yeah. so like, it is kind of surprised. I was, I was surprised too how many people knew about it and just like, because it is like a, if you're in music type, I feel like thing you know about him, but like outside now, I'm seeing like regular like people like, oh yeah, I was just running to get some coffee, listen to Leon Tom. Like what? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, like well, damn. That's like, what needs to happen. happen man. No, I think, yeah. uh, good music needs to come to the forefront. Facts, so. yeah, facts. Absolutely. I'm rock. I'm rocking with uh, Leon Thomas. I'm yeah. rocking with Summer Walker. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's it's. I I think two two years in a row, R and B has had a really good good uh good run. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's so all it's, that R&B is that shit. Please, please stop trying to. <laughs> yo, that's another thing. Yo, I think people just tweet that for reactions now, and I need, I need it to stop. Like, yeah. it's not even close to true. Yeah, it's not. Like, even if you don't, even and even if the big dogs ain't really doing it, mm -hmm. everybody who's under under the radar who is pouring into the the they genre some is shit. cooking, bro. Niggas are dropping some shit, bro. Yeah. Like, people cooking. are like, yeah, bro. People are really cooking, bro. Like yeah. they're trying their hardest. Yeah, which that's is the thing. I think people just respect. assess it based on what's mainstream, and mm -hmm. it's like just. R&B just will never get the push hip hop right currently. Yeah. R&B won't get pushed the way hip hop is. Yeah. And if it's if it's not the big dogs dropping then yeah, it might seem like nothing's happening, but there's a lot happening under your nose. Like yeah. there are a lot of talented R&B acts who just many. may not be the most known, but <laughs> you know. Blame your Spotify algorithms, blame these <laughs> blame music yourself, pages man. that don't post them, said, no, blame, blame yourself for not looking. Like, said, no, blame you know, yourself. There's a bunch <laughs> of different things to blame, but there's just so much good R&B. Like Jazz Caris's album, too. I don't yeah. know if y'all listen to her. Yo, Her album was fantastic. Tough. Yeah. Under the radar. Mm -hmm. Another one. Mm -hmm. Tough. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. The music is there, man. It's there. it's there for y'all. Yeah. So looking forward to that summer. Um, new album that we got this week. Big Glorilla. Glorious. Yeah, 
I remember uh, several weeks ago when we recorded when TJ, TJIF dropped, and we were like, yo, that felt like a heat check for her. Like mm. She just put it out, but it was fire. From half. You know? <laughs> she, she smoked it. That was a it. step back, turned around before it went in. Type yeah. Of thing. Like, and yeah. Like coming off Thanks. of um, Yeah Glow, mm-hmm. the shit with uh, Megan, I think Wanna Be. Wanna like be she good. was just on a roll. And it got to the point where her single, uh, Hold On, was dropped a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Before I pressed play, I just kind of had a feeling I was going to like it. Yeah. And then I pressed play and I liked it. I was like, yo, <laughs> she, she, she can't miss. She right. can't miss right now. Right. So I went into this album expecting it to be good. And it was good. Yeah. It, 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 15 songs, 42 minutes. We got features from uh, Megan Thee Stallion, Lotto, Bossman, D-Lo. Uh, Glorilla got into her gospel bag with Kirk Franklin, Son. Maverick City Music, uh, Sexy Red on there, mm-hmm. T-Pain on there, Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really good mix of features. You know, I, I love that. She, she's really found what works for her, mm-hmm. and she does it. Like, she's got her signature sound now. Yeah. I feel like she's really unlocked that and like good hooks simple catchy stuff Mm -hmm. cool bars like she's really like refined her flow her and lotto on procedure like just great great back and forth energy uh the wipe me down sample on what you know about me with sexy red my nigga hit and it's it's like not just like sampling the beat but the references to the lines Mm -hmm. and like flipping them in a in a cool cool way like all, all, all this, all of it worked for me. This is one of the most enjoyable albums I listened to this year. Like mm-hmm. I, I really liked Lotto's. I really like JT's. But I'd say, if I had to make a list of women rapper albums, I'd probably put, put Glorilla's at the top. To be honest, like that's easily. I'm, I'm, I'm really fucking <clears throat> with it. Yeah, easily. Yeah, nah. I mean, I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Glow, glow, delivered. <clears throat> I want to first say I'm very proud of her. Yeah. Um, not only sure. for dropping an amazing body of work, but for kind of bouncing back. Mm-hmm. You know, Glow came out the gate smoking. Yeah. She came out the gate smoking. FNF was, you know, a big record. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she got her way over to Tomorrow and a Tomorrow 2. Then you get a Cardi feature. You yep. bubbling. And I think she t- di- went on a weird dip yeah. where people was like, oh, it's over. Yeah. It's clipped. Oh, yeah. nah, she's dead. She, her run is up. Yeah. Um, and it was weird. I'm like, damn, Glow, did you lose your power? Like, what's going on here? Um, And it's beautiful to see that. I guess she sat down, acknowledged it, figured it out. And came back like, nah, I'm here. Like, mm-hmm. I'm here. And I think it's even better than it was before. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of yeah. scary to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Her, I'm I'm super just proud of her, too. Just, like, to see the progression of her coming out. Like, do you mm-hmm. do y'all remember how that first video looked? <laughs> FNF? Which is cool. That's her <laughs> first. Yeah, facts. That, that was her first video. Like, facts. it was cool. And you know what I'm saying? Just how, how she looked, how the video looked, how everything looked. And... To see where it's at now and how elevated it is mm-hmm. from like the sound, the look, the stardom, everything. Like it's 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 like the nigga the body, like ev- <laughs> everything Yo, is like she, everything she, is elevated, my she nigga. She has Speedy Mormon ready to crash out on Bro, Speedy said, Wait, how'd you complex. nigga said, How'd you say that? Nigga thought <laughs> Nigga, right. he made, she made up a whole new word. That nigga, was, you, that nigga was, was on there said, risen up. Yeah, crazy. Well, yeah. No, but for real, like she's she, she's cold, bro. And the songs are amazing. She's only there's no I don't see no ceiling right now. So whatever she wants to do, she can do. Yeah. We'll use the good word he said, elevated. Because like yeah. for me, F and F and T G I F are like Pokemon evolved. Right? Mm. It's like it's like. FNF is like I'm mm. out the gate, but mm. like F- TGIF is like mm. the same kind of song, yeah. just Bad. elevated. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's like just elevated. FNF was catchy, but it was, yeah. it was still a little rough. Right, rough. You could TGIF, tell it's like, yeah. there's structure yeah, to bro. it. There's yeah, yeah. It, she, she, just she, the she's, name of the song too. It's like yeah. it's like perk. It's like everything's mm-hmm. perfect. Like TJ, mm. like, it's like come on, bro. Yeah. And then like the hook, like y'all said, the hooks are like catchy, mm-hmm. simple, and like straight to the point mm-hmm. and straight. She, yeah, she, I th- her catalog shows that she got them that music that she could literally drop the beat, put her mic out to mm-hmm. the crowd, mm-hmm. and every woman in the building is going to say it oh, word yeah, for word. Yeah. So that is ridiculous. Good opening <laughs> lines, yeah, like she, she's sh- showing the beauty of simplicity. Sometimes, like you don't gotta do too much. Some yeah. niggas try to get too artsy, yeah. get too left of center. She's right. staying like within her course. It's very southern. Like uh, <laughs> my, my, my boys you. described it as like That's a mid two thousands like summer album. Like it kind of restored the feeling and. With the samples, like it, it, it makes sense. Right. Just like her whole swag to her, like she, she, she reminds me of like a mid two thousand so, um, sure. southern artist. The gospel song was ambitious. I, 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 it was cool. Like, I didn't love it. It was, 
It was cool. I think it fits, bro. You I think fire. It I think place perfectly. I feel like thematically, I think it, it works for her because you know, you know, she her first of all her name, like her name is Gloria Hallelujah, yeah. right? So she's she comes from the the church and she comes from you know obviously a a, a holy you know holy family or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be, and you know I think when I when I first saw the uh you know the track list or the feature list because I like the way she rolled out the feature list as mm-hmm. well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I know there's gonna be a gospel record on here because why not? Like, yeah. <laughs> why not? You know, and I am a sucker for a choir. Yeah, yeah. On any on any song, for sure. Um, on any hip hop record, I think, yo, artists, if y'all can Dude. figure it out because that elevates the sound for me. For me, I, if if you're me trying too. to satisfy, if that elevates the sound. But I think she didn't call no average, you know, average guy. She called the big dog. Kirk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You call Kurt. You call Maverick City. Like yeah. she called a big dog. Kira so sheared, yeah. I think it, I think it fit in perfectly just because you know that glory. Um, that Glorilla Prayer record is on there as well. So. Yeah, it's right after. Yeah, so mm. I think I think I think it worked. I yeah. think it worked. I, I didn't think it was bad. I, mm-hmm. I, I like, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. It, it was ambitious. She had the singers on there though. You got Money For Long. Sure. You got T Pain. Friday. Like yeah. though, I think she. she they, 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 yo, whoever, whoever A and R and did all of that, were man, they did salute great. to you too. They they crazy. And, the, and that you. money long song too, mm-hmm. uh, money long, yeah, I said yeah. That, money long song. <laughs> d- d- don't deserve like it's it's, it's, it it's just like <laughs> who who can hate that? Like Word. the messaging of it, like that nigga don't deserve you. Don't let mm-hmm. him cheat on you. Don't Word. like all. It's just like she it, got a song about beating a nigga ass. Who, yeah, man. Who put it? Who put, who put it? So, yo, Glow, you tough. And she, Glow, she just makes tough. it all sound so like endearing. It's yeah. like, yeah, bet. Like, I, yeah. I'm fucking with this. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, southern s- shit. say whatever. Like, she yeah, she really southern. hit all the boxes. Like, mm-hmm. turn up shit, empowering shit. Yeah. Um, like lovey dovey type right. shit. And again, calling the singers. Call the singers right. to if you want to get in the the rap R and B hybrid bag. Mm-hmm. Call the singers. Call Let the, the singer sing your hook. Let the singer sing your hook. So she got T Pain. Money Long Friday. It was it, it just excellent. Right. Like, just the perfect bow on what's been a great year of her. Right. A great year for her. She's, I, I love it for her. Keep I'm, winning, I'm Glow. Absolutely. Keep winning. Yeah, Absolutely. Keep doing your thing. So, sure. the album was ap- uh, aptly named. This was glorious. <laughs> um, let's transition into what has had the timeline on fire. And I think you two are the perfect people to have this conversation with. Obviously, I, I did want to have it with Miss Two Bs because she is a journalist, but you two both manage artists. Yeah. And so I I would love your perspective before we get into what. All right. So what we're going to talk about is um, Omen, Russ, and Wale all had commentary on music journalism and why rappers don't talk to music journalists. An ongoing conversation for years. A lot of people have been complaining about it, complaining about the state of rap media, complaining about the state of rap. Just a lot of I don't want to say all complaining. It's been critiques, valid critiques. A lot of people who have valid points. Um, you two, as as artist managers, well, what is your perspective on music journalism? The people that you have your artists talk to, the the like the journalist versus streamers thing. Like, how do you how do you decide like in what ways to move with regards to that? Well, because I know you you manage a, a artist who's a little bit. Further ahead than my guys, so Which is, it, it, whatever. It, so, it, uh, hmm, this is a good question, man. I and Armand, you know, you mm-hmm. know, Sam, Sam, yeah. Sam cares yeah. a lot, and he cares, he cares about stuff that like stuff that real writers and real journalists care about. That that I feel like you know even my parents care about like so mm-hmm. like we was in the new york times and I, I, which was fire by the way so yeah which is which is, which <laughs> is like crazy. which is like you know like yeah it's like that shit like for us that hits like that's that that that's that's that, that, that's insane and like yeah and then like my dad's called me he's like yo like i ordered i just ordered a new york times like and like for me like it, 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 it's one of those things that like yeah it starts to be like oh shit like being in print matters yeah hey, like having your name written out and like someone doing real story real background on you matters like it's in you know we're, i'm a little bit older not a little bit older but like but you know what i'm saying like I, blog era that was like yeah. my time where i fell in love with music and right. was reading and writing like reading a lot of stuff and like getting backgrounds on fucking kanye west or getting backgrounds on like mac millers and and stuff like that you know and to me that stuff is cool it's, it's and also like blog era was a lot when like 
I guess video content started to like really kind of mm -hmm, blow facts. up yeah. where you was kind of getting these interviews and getting access to artists that you know you never had before, especially mm -hmm. like nowadays, everything is social media is you see everything and everything and anything all the damn time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, the way we look at it, the way I look at it is it just it all depends which is a super like super base answer to it, but it really depends. I feel like it depends on who's who's going out searching for these stories yeah. and then uh, when they're searching for these stories are they connecting with people that actually really want to do the stories and actually like love music yeah and like you know that's a general statement too everybody's like oh nobody loves music anymore like you can really tell <laughs> i was saying that to my man too. yeah like you can but you <laughs> can really only me only i'm the only nigga in the, in the world i love music yeah <laughs> like but you can really tell like you can tell sometimes you can tell 100 percent when niggas really like love music really mm -hmm. care like you know yeah. um but there's like there's good people out there, bro. Mm -hmm. There's really actually good like writers, good journal like you, like you, my nigga, Thank like Ed, Armeezy, like, <laughs> like Mano, like um, even like how people be mad at him, uh, Alphonse Pitchfork, like he's yeah, cold, yeah. like yeah, like he because he really he he's a real writer, like that shit yeah. is cold, like I fuck with him. Um, nah, I, I can attest to your team, like y'all brought Cash to Vibe, y'all mm -hmm. brought him to Billboard, mm -hmm. Rolling Stone, New York Times, of course, mm -hmm. and so obviously y'all care about written word coming from actual journalists mm -hmm. but then you're also having cash do the yachty pod mm -hmm, and other mm -hmm, podcasts mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and i think that's the thing is the the rise of these artist-led platforms that's the hard streamers stuff. and all that that's the hard stuff now. they've yeah. got people from the outside looking in or even journalists upset like why are these streamers getting these big opportunities? Like, well, the streamers got more visibility than, yeah, <laughs> than people like me, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately for me because I don't care. I'm not competing with them. I don't compare myself mm -hmm. to them. But that's been the ongoing conversation is like these people presenting themselves as journalists. I'm like, I don't even think M Kai Sanad doesn't present himself as a <laughs> journalist. I don't like, think he's ever said I think those Ak words, is the only big streamer who calls himself a journalist. <laughs> but I mean, when you look at who Ak has connections to and what he does, it's journalism. His it's methods, yeah. you know, shaky, but he is kind of doing journalism. I won't call him a journalist, but he's the information he's provided to the to the space. I'll say journalist. This. I'll say this <laughs> to you, bro, because I was just on the phone with my man last night talking about this. The mm -hmm. night, the night pushups initially leaked. Mm -hmm. The night Rick Ross responded to pushups. Mm -hmm. The only media platform that we were tapped into was academics. Yeah, man, I kid shit. you not. Real I was shit. at a baby shower. Mm -hmm. I left the baby shower. <laughs> And went on, called my we like we was on the phone giddy as hell. Like, yo, mm -hmm. I right, stay on the phone. I'm watching act. You watching act? Like, yo, bro. Yeah. So salute to what he is doing. Yeah. I would consider him a journalist. To answer what you were saying, for me on my end, you know, if the artists I work with, we're kind of in the stage where we'll we'll probably sit down with whoever really cares, yeah. right? You got to be honest about it. Like, if you care. And you have you got some damn morals and yeah. integrity, of course. But <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Facts, facts. we'll talk to who cares because you you're you're in a stage of your career where you need to get your name out to however many people you can. For sure. And if this platform over here, even if they only have uh, five hundred subscribers or whatever the case may be, compared to fifteen k on this side or whatever the case may be, you still want to be able to grab at least two, three, four, five of them. Yeah. So uh, you kind of want to, you know, take advantage of whatever opportunity comes your way. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, um, I adore long form content. Yeah. It's the reason why I sit down and watch Stay Busy and every other podcast that I'm locked into. I, my man's called me one day like, yo, how many podcasts do you really like listen to or like watch? And I'm like, yo, I'll really sit down and like, I, I probably got over 20, 25. Like, I'm wow, just like consistently kind of break down and go through because I love long form content. Yeah. Mm. For me, the way I work and operate when I'm in the crib, like, if I need something, mm. I need something to be listened to in the background. It's not always music for me. Yeah. yeah. I love to sit down and just watch these pods. So, for me, it's podcasts, it's interviews. And that's something that I miss. I remember back when I was like, you know, growing, like, early after college. And watching all my favorite artists sit down and do interviews when their album was coming out or when it had uh, or when it had just come out, that that feeling is yeah. gone, bro. Yeah. Like I'm just like, damn, I, I know I'm never gonna hear from Cole, bro. I know, like I know Wale, oh, I haven't seen Wale's face. Yeah, well, Wale hates the. No, I'm saying like <laughs> he hates me. It's just it's a dub, right? Yeah. Like I I got happy that Big Sean was talking to um Charlemagne, mm -hmm. right? I'm yeah, like, and, and like. Sean ain't my favorite, but I'm like at least one of the cool one, see. one of like somebody sat down bro, with somebody. You know what's crazy? Not to cut you off, but, yeah, bro. Not to cut you off, but you know what just it just happened 
with fucking Derek Derek Rose going on uh, five twenty. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. I sat, mm-hmm. nigga. I gotta sit down and watch I that. I sat, too. bro, because I I'm from Chicago. I was born in Chicago. Like, 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 like the way I look at D Rose, like he's damn near God to mm-hmm. me. So, like, yeah, like, yeah, like you just sometimes you just be like, oh, like, oh my God, like you don't, you don't, you don't know where you're gonna hear this person talk again. Yeah. Cause they haven't talked before. It's like very, like, it's very rare. It's I don't very, think journalism died, by the way. No, no, yeah. I no, think no. it changed. Yeah. I think the big dogs kind of got to adjust to it. People gave Drake so much, uh, you know, gr- uh, like slack for like tapping in with the streamers and, mm-hmm. you know, bigging up the Kaisenats of the world. But, you know, Drake has always shown that he will adjust to what's going on. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, Nikki was up there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got he Kai got the pull. Yeah. You know, they want to. He's in the McDonald's commercials. Bro, bro. He, he had John he's, Cena he's, on the stream. Let's last be real. You night, got bro. John Cena was sitting nuts. in Nicki Minaj. It, that was like, like the biggest nuts, nigga. fucking real here, bro. I couldn't. It blew my mind. Bro, bro I seen the I, I seen the iCarly edit. Have y'all seen the iCarly? Nah, edit? but he is iCarly, bro. Yeah, bro. Someone put like the iCarly. <laughs> that theme. Is, that's funny. Someone put the iCarly theme song Kai over Carly. and just had like all the yeah. clips of all the shit he'd be doing in it. It was perfect, bro. I was like, iCarly. Yeah. Ooh. That's a bar. Right? Yo, you like that? You like that, bro? Ooh. I'm weak. I mean, but all right. The other question is, okay, who do y'all want to see on camera talking to Rob Markman? Mm-hmm. Right? Who do y'all want? Who do who do y'all want? Y'all want yeah. Jay Z to come outside and tell y'all what, what he's going through? Yeah. Um, Kanye West. Y'all want his? You know, y'all want his opinion on on the state of the culture? Mm-hmm. What, like, who do y'all want to hear from? And that's the no. thing. I was talking to Josh before we got started. Um, just to give some more context to you listeners, I don't really know where this began, but mm-hmm. uh, Omen from Dreamville tweeted something. The tweet is deleted now. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. I wish I screenshotted it. Yeah. But Rob, Rob Markman quoted him and said he disagreed. There are plenty of journalists who don't. Oh, because Omen said something about journalists who only want to do the gossip and ask about the salacious shit. Mm-hmm. And Rob was like, there are plenty of journalists who don't do the gossip and the biggest artists know who's who, mm-hmm. but still don't support. Mm-hmm. And then Omen was like, I don't think they know who's who then, bro. Like, respectfully, it's you and maybe two other people, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Rob named some people, Andre G, Craig Jenkins, uh, Evie Ani. Andres Tar- Tardio, mm. uh, B Dot, and Alice Simone. He named me. Shout out to me. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, what? <shout> <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Yeah, uh, first me. of all, we need to give my man <laughs> a little clap clap for that. But so a lot of those names that you named, right? I, I've never seen them, mm. including you. We got to be real. Mm-hmm. I've never seen them sit down in front of the, any of the big dogs right. or yeah. the second tier or the third tier. Yeah, and have like a one on one fully produced yeah. interview about whatever the topic is. Yeah, and that's right? the thing we have to acknowledge is. The artists are choosing. Some of them think they're above it at mm-hmm. at, at a certain level. And honestly, I get Damn, it. What changed? Like I I I get it. Like Rolling Stone did some fucked up shit with Drake, so he was just like, "Fuck all journalism." Mm. Like I'm not talking to publications. I'll sit mm. down with it's- a Elliot Wilson and a B dot. I'll talk to a Bobby Altoff. I'll talk to <laughs> other people. But as far as journalists, and if if you really look at, and I don't want to get into a defending Drake like conversation, but if you look at the way journalism covers him, like mm-hmm. it's it's very very little of it is like fair like mm. like the way that they like psychoanalyze him and don't often review the music it's always some psychoanalysis of mm. him so i get it he doesn't want to put himself in that position where people are maybe even disingenuously you know interrogating him or just trying to get dirt on him because like that's that's really what a lot of people are care about as, at this point is like knowing dirt about drake um yeah i mean i think the last I mean, last time drake sat down with a journalist it had to be the, the Elliot Wilson joint in 2019. And I, that was mad long. 2019, bro. But that was something he controlled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on his YouTube channel, yeah. like, at his house. And right, right, I, right. It, it was edited, like, all that. Like they For edited me, the, I think Cole's last interview was Angie. He did, uh... Oh, well, he sat down with Bob Myers. Yes. <laughs> I remember yeah, he sat yeah, down yeah, with Bob. Yeah. That was some random ass shit, right? Yeah, and he also did the Slam Magazine cover in, like, mm-hmm. 2020, when yeah, all season dropped. I got that joint. Kendrick, I don't know when the fuck is... I, didn't he, him and Roddy Rich do some, like interview with one another for i forget what the Kendrick magazine don't talk was to nobody either. but yeah it's just like i don't know I, I think you know and so a lot of my journalists were going uh back and forth because russ jumped in the conversation right. and said like he pays to produce his own interviews and he'll bring b dot in and he said you know like journalists got to build their brands up and i say this a lot it's a layered conversation like i i recognized myself years ago when i was before i really got to the place i'm at now like if i wanted to build my portfolio build mm-hmm. my profile writing wasn't enough that's why i started stay busy it was to create an opportunity for myself and, and, and it's worked out for me now my journalism career is elevated the pot is elevated it's gone hand in hand a lot of people who just write don't want to feel like they have to pivot to the video content to streaming to a podcast to all that because it's also just 
so many podcasts now. How do you make it stand out? You got to put the work in to make it stand out. Mm-hmm. Like I, I get it from my, my journalist peers who were going back and forth with Russ. Like I salute them for fighting the fight. It's not a fight that I want to fight. And mm-hmm. honestly, these rap media conversations every two months get really exhausting to me because people don't want to change their minds. We live in an <laughs> I said what I said culture. <laughs> I I was telling Josh before we started recording, there was a point in my journalism career, probably around the pandemic, where these same conversations were happening. Journalism is dead. So not only was I writing to, because I loved it, and to elevate my career, but also to try and prove people wrong. And I realized that that was just the wrong motivation. And it got exhausting because no matter how dope something uh, was that I wrote and the the amount of love I got, niggas will still have these blanket critiques for the field. Mm-hmm. So why am I going to try to prove someone wrong who's never going to change their mind? So I've stopped fighting the fight because honestly, I got a job. I'm getting paid to write. The people that I need to impress are myself mm-hmm. and my employers and the people close to me who, who I know fuck with me and will be honest and give me feedback and critique as well. I'm, I'm not out here to try to change the perspective on shit because honestly, a lot of people don't even do the research to, to figure out who the writers are that are doing really good work. The Jordan mm-hmm. Roses. The Regina chose the Wongo. Look at like, gang. Look at like, gang. It's, right? it's, it's, it's so many. It's so, and I don't want to name people because I'll forgive you. But there's mm. so many writers who are doing really great work, and these these artists or their teams just may not know because at the end of the day, when you are a publicist for someone, yeah, you want their story to be told right, but you want the most visibility. So of course you're going to go to a Kai Sanat before you go to someone who writes for Uproxx mm. or who writes for whatever publication. I get that. And so what I do is just the opportunities that come my way with big names, I'm grateful for them. And I just try to knock them out the park. So, you know, as they get more traction, bigger artists will come my way. And so I feel like part of it for us journalists is to manage our expectations a bit. Sure. Like we're we're not going to get the Drake interview. We're not going to get the Kendrick interview. We're not going to get the Cole interview. We're not going to get the Kanye interview. If you do get it and somebody, one of you might one day, awesome. I'm going to be happy as fuck for you. But I think, I do think the reality is there's some people on the journalist side who complain about the lack of big names doing these things who they don't really care about the field. They care about themselves. Like they want to talk to that person. There are some people who actually do just want to hear from these artists regardless of who they talk to. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see between it to really get like who wants what, because like there are just so many voices going at one another and just all this commotion. Um, and this is not directed to any of my peers. Like I saw like Andre G was tweeting about it. Kia was tweeting about it. Like salute to y'all. Y'all do great work. So this is not directed at y'all, but like, I don't know. I just feel like at this point, the conversation is so exhausting. It's kind of like the R and B is dead conversation. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of great R and B out here, but if niggas don't do their due, due, due diligence to find it and it's not promoted to where niggas can see that it's happening, mm-hmm. they're going to keep saying R&B is dead. Yeah. It's the same with this writing shit. Like, there are a lot of great writers who do a lot of great shit. The reality is a video is going to go more viral than an article. Right. So Absolutely. If, if if the shit don't come across people's people's pages, they're not going to see it. They think it's not happening. Yeah. That's just the reality of the world and it sucks, but it, that's just what it is. Y'all, no. gotta, y'all gotta compete with Angel Reese, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> like, my think God. about it, bro. Yeah, yeah. This shit don't stop. Bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, shit. and that's the other thing. It's like, you know, like at the end of the day, these platforms with these people who have these built in audiences, yeah, they just go further. That's a fact. Than, than what we do. I, I don't compete with an Angel Reese or a Kai Sonat, though. I'd, I'd be wasting my time. I'd be a foolish ass nigga to try to be like, yo, you, you want to talk to Kai Sonata, you want to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Niggas would rather be eating the chicken Big Mac with Kai Sonata than sitting in, 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 in my office with me <laughs> talking about, like, come on, man. Like, I, I know what it is, but, and it's okay. I've still been able to talk to Lotto, Bad Bunny, Metro Boomin. Like, it's, it's okay. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still doing fine for myself. And a lot of the people who are fighting the good fight, and I salute, they have been able to do, to do well for themselves, too. I get that they want the field to be better. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it, it sucks. Like, the reality is, like, this is just what it is. The game has changed as things always change. It's a, it's a tough reality to, like, kind of, you know, sit with. But mm. it is what it is, man. So, yeah. But also Russ, man. Like, <laughs> and another thing. Russ. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to cap. What, like, what, you, what you got to say about uh, the long hair guy? I, I think I've said it on the pod before. I actually do like some of his stuff. Mm. I respect what he has built for himself to mm. where he's selling out MSG completely independent he's got a rabid fan base Mm -hmm. his numbers are crazy he releases frequently like he's really kind of like a he's really like a an enigma within the space almost because he he releases Mm -hmm. so often he has respect of like 
Records. Respectable rap yeah, niggas yeah. in the space. Oh, he does, yeah. He's got platinum. That Chomp series like, that he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he does numbers. Like, mm-hmm. he's... And it's like, you wouldn't know because he's not a highly touted dude. But a lot of people say they don't give a fuck about Russ. Mm-hmm. Uh, understandably. A lot of people say he's whack, whatever. I'm just like... I, I, I think you, you, you have a better way to spend your time than arguing with Russ. Yeah, that's that's all different I'm battles, man. <laughs> like I, uh, me and Josh again were talking about. I was like, when you go outside, you hear niggas say, "I'm a Nikki fan. I'm a Yay fan. I'm a this fan." I've never met someone who says I'm a Russ fan in <laughs> like, real life. <laughs> like, bro, like Russ don't got influence like that. So him talking down on journalists to me, scroll, read it. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I, I, I he's don't so care. condescending. Yo, to like, and that's the other thing. It's everything like everything that he talked about. He's music. done so great for himself. Like writes, Sick mixes, man. masters, oh, engineers, all shit. that produces salute. He he uses that as this like arrogant, I know everything, I know best type shit. And it's like mm. sometimes the shit you have to say is good, but People don't like the messenger, <laughs> and people don't like your delivery of it. Like, mm. bro, you you got to be a, just a, like I don't want to use the word humble, but be be a little more like gracious mm. in how Facts. you in how you you know um, acknowledge what you've accomplished and in the advice you give people. No one wants to listen to a nigga who like is giving advice, but like being like condescending about it yeah. and like no n- stupid ass nigga listen to this like no bro shut nigga up act like like, he, nigga act like he invented rap yeah bro or like invent, <laughs> not even invented rap invented rap in the music industry yeah like, first like, of all like this is our space yeah <laughs> and you're in it first which is first. cool yeah like that's cool dude you're, like, you're doing your thing but you're very he has a very his tone is very like hey my boy it's the type of nigga you don't want to listen to like yeah. it's it's, mm-hmm. it's like the it's like that cousin in the family who just like you at the family event having a good time and they come they just they fuck the vibes up like mm-hmm. rush be fucking the vibes like bro just do your thing keep doing your thing well, what you say you know who it impacts cool but like I, I'm not gonna waste my time arguing with Russ like that's just that's not what I'm going me to neither do. and and honestly I feel like he was like capitalizing on it too I saw some of my journalist peers quote him he was quoting them back like there was one person oh, he, he got what he wanted. Yeah, he he, he got attention. He got like, what he wanted. He said some crazy shit to one 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 woman. He said, "You are a journalist. Your career does not exist without artists or athletes or whoever it is you journal about. Oh my my life and all artists and career exists without y'all. Y'all get too bold on here and forget what role you actually even play in the grand scheme of things. Your job is to stand on the sideline and wait for other people to do shit." In order for you to even have a job, relax. Mm. You no, couldn't be for the fade. any more wrong about journalism, I, I my brother. I would yeah. ask for the fade. Like, you, you could you, not be any up. more wrong about my field. And this <laughs> shows you're the wrong messenger for this shit. Yeah, that, was an aggre- that was aggressively wrong. That was crazy, um, yo. I think I, I, I see where his mentality is coming from, right? Do, what yeah. it may look like. But yeah. um, if you're being honest, like, you know, there's different skill types within mm. that one umbrella right yeah there's different types of journalism yeah and there's a way there's different ways that these journalists go about what they do yeah. not all of them are just sitting there waiting for you to do something for them to react to it yeah some of them are proactive they're going out and creating content doing whatever they got to do man mm-hmm. so you kind of gotta gotta pump the brakes on that russ yeah it's, not it's, even gonna it's creating the story it's finding the story the story doesn't always come to you you yeah. have to you have to go out and seek it so have you guys ever uh read armand's fuck the world review i just wanna <laughs> I always, I always stop. no it's all good it's all good that's we, my favorite we, Armand um, piece <laughs> We, we were just talking about that on Need to Know a couple weeks ago. I, I I need to go back and read it myself. Like I don't, I don't like to. That shit was elite. Brent Fires, you owe my boy. I ain't gonna lie, dog. <laughs> I, I don't read my old writing too much, but sometimes I get in that like nostalgic bag to see how far I've come. Oh, it might be cringe now, right? It might be. It might be. <laughs> you gave you gave it a good review. Like, oh, you gave amazing. It like, yeah, oh, yeah. I love um, the album. And it, it just album like start, it was he compared good. it to the he compared it to the state of the world at the time. It was yeah, the best thing the I ever Black read. Black Lives Matter movement, <laughs> all that. Yeah, I I admittedly, and we're gonna bleep this out. I. <laughs> and I was listening to the album and I was like, it was like right in the thick of all of the Black Lives Matter stuff. And I was like, yo, I'm hearing this differently. So I jotted some ideas down, came back to a sober, wrote one of the best articles I've ever written in my life. And uh, yeah, so I'll have to go back and read that. But thank you, Kojo, for always uplifting that. Shout out to journalism. But man. Um, yeah, man, like, I don't know. It's just, <sighs> I... I just tune out a lot of the narratives about journalism the same way I tune out a lot of the narratives about like everything just like cause, <laughs> cause the internet just like people just run with these blanket <gasps> statements and these generalizations and I'm just like I mean you're not gonna get me fired up cause I, I, I know what I do when it comes to this shit and I know what my peers do yeah. when it comes to this shit there, there is an elite class of journalists who do great for themselves so you not being aware of it is either uh, a it reflects on you, it reflects on your team, it reflects on whoever. But like, 
people just got to stop reacting to these these edge lords who just want that attention or people who aren't informed enough then make these edge like lords. these general ass statements like that that's really what it, I, I don't have the time i don't have the time to argue on twitter and especially with someone who just clip like when when you could tell someone doesn't know what they're talking about that'd be it's no point in, t- in trying to engage with them because mm. they're going to keep running with what they believe to be true right. you going to get mad in the process like I just, I just don't do it. I just don't do it. But again, I salute all the journalists who are fighting on our behalf uh, with that. And I guess salute the journalists who are doing great work. Um, people that I know, people that I don't know, but I read people that I, whatever, like keep doing what you're doing. Don't compare yourself to these streamers. Well, let them cook. They're doing what they do. You, you do what you do. Like if you're happy, if you're able to make a living off of what you do, and if you can talk to people that you'd be proud to talk to, you're winning. Like you don't need the approval of Russ or any other rapper who thinks that they're above journalism like that's just that's just what it is like manage your expectations and just keep doing keep doing what for you for you for you and for that paycheck but for you more than anything so that's that he got that off his chest y'all yeah man it's just like it's, it, it, it gets exhausting <laughs> no, it, just, it gets very you. exhausting um so before we get into the main event ding 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 um <laughs> you know i can't leave y'all without a word of the week but I got words of the week this week. Now, these are words that y'all probably know. Yo, Eb, you paying attention? Very, very well. Yeah, y'all probably know these words. <laughs> but I think that they are important um, in what we are about to discuss. So my words of the week are, when I pull it up, uh, objective. <laughs> Say objective with me, fellas. Objective. objective. And bias. 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 There we go. Nah. So, <laughs> The definition of objective of a person or the judgment (laughs) not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. Some synonyms for objective are impartial, unbiased, unprejudiced, (laughs) nonpartisan, disinterested, neutral. You guys can kind of get in the middle. (laughs) Uh, For bias, it is a noun. The definition is prejudice in favor of or against one thing person or group compared with another usually in a way considered to be unfair yeah. bias can also be used as a verb the definition of the verb uh-huh. is what is it cause to feel or show inclination or prejudice ah. for or against someone or something synonyms for bias are prejudice <laughs> favoritism uh-huh. sway uh. partiality distort skew uh. you get where i'm going so it. What, what, what we are going to discuss <laughs> yo, yo. this week is a track that dropped, a surprise track, a bomb, uh, as, as this man said, a bazooka was dropped on the game. <laughs> um, so J. Cole surprise released a track, Port Antonio. It was another Instagram exclusive, but he blessed us with the YouTube link too. So shout out to you, Cole, for doing that. This was like, a, it was a Wednesday night, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wednesday night. So I'm sitting in the crib. I think I think I knew I was gonna take work off the next day, mm-hmm. so I was just chilling up. I think I was playing PS Five. Um, put the track on. I didn't know what he was gonna say. I mean, it, it was easy to assume what he might have been rapping about. I'm listening. First verse. I mean, good. I mean, J Cole, just one of the best rappers ever, in my opinion, just from a technical standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint. And I think the great thing about Cole, and I had this conversation because like. You remember in like 2014, those memes, you got to have a certain level of intelligence to to enjoy J. Cole. (laughs) And they were always really stupid. And I I hated them. And I think Mm -hmm. those memes made people resentful towards Cole and his fans. I think the beauty of his rapping is the simplicity in the storytelling. He's Mm -hmm. just very direct. Like he, he puts it there for you. There's not, you don't have to think too much, but it just hits because like, excuse me, he just puts it all pause in like in your face. Like, Like he, he just puts it all there. So listen to the first verse. It's great. It's like super, you know, like vulnerable, honest. He's talking about how he grew up and leaving the hood and feeling awkward in the hood and rap being, you know, his safe place helped him to, you know, feel connected. And then you get into verse two and, you know, he starts out and then he gets to the climax of the verse where he talks about, you know, Drake and Kendrick. And I, when he got into that part, I, I was laying down. I sat up. <laughs> like as I, I sat up. like the undertaker I'm the listening I'm like, oh this is, he really getting into the shits now okay and I thought the way that he put it was so good and to give context we've talked about it on the pod I was not a fan of what he did in April 
Neither was I for the for the record. I want to make that very clear. Kojo is a very big J. Uh, J-, J- Cole's your goat, right? Like you by by a landslide, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So he has saved me in multiple ways. That's my dog. A lot of people mm. weren't a fan of what he did in April. Um, my my biggest thing was I'm perfectly fine with you not wanting to get into a beef with your friends, but the fact that you dropped seven minute drill and then took it back that that for me like was like nah. Now, <laughs> granted, at the time, all we had was like that. Like push-ups dropped two weeks after seven minute drill. Mm-hmm. So we didn't know it was going to go to this personal level. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was uh, there's a story about Schoolboy Q talking to Cole saying, yo, get out. Like it's it's about to get crazy. And whatever happened behind the scenes, he heard something and he 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 backed out. And you know what? Fine. I just from a rap fan standpoint, I did not like that. Mm-hmm. As a fan who wanted to see him engage too, because he's never really rap beefed with anyone. Mm-hmm. This, you know, everyone wanted this heavyweight battle of the three. Like, so it would have been great to see. This song made me appreciate and lock into the humanity of J. Cole. And I think that's the most important thing here that so many people are missing is everyone's looking at it like they're rappers too, or they're only listening with the rap fan ears. When you're a human, you can appreciate J. Cole saying, I wouldn't have lost a battle. I would have lost a bro. What, I'm sure y'all have gotten into arguments with, with friends before. And things have started out kind of just whatever. And then it got to a point where it's like, I can say this thing where I know I'll win the argument, mm-hmm. but it's going to get too intense. Mm-hmm. Like, we might have to throw hands. Right. So you pull back from that. Mm-hmm. And that's what Cole communicated. And I'm just like, from a human standpoint, I fully get that. There's certain... So there's people in my life I don't want to get personal with. There's shit I can say about them. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that, though. Mm-hmm. Why, 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 would I, why would I do that? And so that was what Port Antonio made me really focus on. And it honestly changed my perspective on what he did in April um, wow. a good amount. Nice. Um, and the reactions on social media, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Everyone was just like. Well, I missed those because I, I kind of, you know. Uh, salute to you yeah, for that. You I are lucky. Because yeah, yeah. I, and, and I knew. I listened to the track twice. <laughs> I, I immediately really liked it. And I, I just knew, I was like, I'm about, to t- I'm about to open Twitter and I'm going to see mad niggas yeah. focusing on him saying, I wouldn't have lost the battle. And, and only talking about that. It's, and of course, I saw a niggas like, yo, so this nigga's basically telling us like he was pussy. Like he ain't won a battle, but he's saying he could have won a battle. I'm like, bro, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. Like, why are y'all so... Fu- these oh. ni- and uh, I, I don't know if y'all saw the, 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 uh, the uh, thread I put out on Twitter um, last week. And I'm, 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 I'm about to get to y'all. I'm, 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 I'm just, just kind of setting it up. But um, I tweeted out a thread about the song the day after it came out because what people were saying was just really blowing my mind. Um, And so I'm going to, I'm going to read a little bit of it. Um, My first tweet was, I'm always fascinated by how people can hear the same song and interpret it differently. It's certainly not a new concept, but it's interesting to see how confirmation bias, among other things, plays a role in what people focus on and take away. Watch the party die by Kendrick Lamar dropped and up and down the TL, you see people entertained by how much Kendrick hates Drake, but that was a small portion of a larger thought within the track. Mm -hmm. The new J. Cole song drops and people are focused on him saying he would have won the battle. There's countless other examples of this in music and in content at large. And when so many people Mm. focus on the low hanging fruit, Mm. it almost makes people who look a bit deeper to get the overarching message look like the crazy ones for trying to have that mm. level of understanding. This isn't Whoa. meant to come off Whoa. condescending. No, nah, they just my went heart. crazy. Because yeah. that happens so much in sports now, too. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Oh my it's God. all about Com- the narrative. And what, it's always the lowest. What do they, what do they call it? Confirmation bias? Confirmation bias, yeah. Oh, oh the, 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 This was me who tweeted this. This was me. Oh, oh, this, oh. This nigga oh, 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 is my thread. It's my thread. Oh, I'm, I'm not He's even done here. This nigga said, wait, no, that was me. Yeah, Gangster. I got you. That's hard. This isn't meant to come off condescending. I'm not saying this J. Cole record is deep or complex or defending what he did. I thought his moves in April were whack, but he said things outside of the points about the battle that ended up taking precedence and changed my perspective a bit. There's been a crazy obsession with this battle and the fallout, unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It'll be really interesting to look back and see how people who feel one way now feel about it when we are more removed from it. And honestly, and one of my final tweets was, I didn't even want to post that thread. Mm Um, cause I knew someone would misunderstand me, like call, call me bias, uh-huh. which I am. I'm biased. <laughs> it, That's why I, those were our words of the week. Every human being on earth is biased. <laughs> the moment you give your opinion on something, mm-hmm. you're biased. Yes. 
own it. And lean into it. Like, that like shit. just it is, <clears throat> it is what it is. Yeah. You could be biased and still be fair. Mm-hmm. Like, so which is very frustrating. But yeah. Um, I, I didn't even want to post that and I was like, you know what? Save the rest of it for uh the podcast. Mm-hmm. And then I added another uh tweet to the thread. Someone tweeted, um, mixed messages. J. Cole wants to be the bigger man, but there's inconsistency. He claims he can outwrap anyone, then avoids beef for friendship, and now mm-hmm. says he could have won but didn't want to lose a bro. You can't have it both ways, and that's what put him in this position. I quoted that and said, prime example of what my entire thread was about. He labeled it inconsistent, but I think both of those things can exist. You can win a rap battle. You didn't want to rap battle with your friends and say the things that they were saying about one another. You can, <clears throat> you can dislike his thought process, but it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So just another like frustrating thing. And I really want to appreciate this song for the, the master full display of just everything that he did, <laughs> but the reactions and all that and certain conversations I've had and podcasts that I've seen just, unfortunately we got to talk about the bullshit too, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to stop. No. How did y'all feel about Port Antonio? Let me let me cook, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's your nigga. He said, he said, yo, clear I'm out. Good. No, no, I'm good. He I, 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 so I I go to the corner. Because I haven't <laughs> yeah, go ahead, I go haven't engaged with nobody about the You're topic. Lucky. You're I, so just, lucky. I, I was I was I'm blessed enough to hear it on vacation one time. I know that shit hit different. Oh, it hit different in Puerto Sandy and toes. Oh my gosh, it hit different. But I will say... There's one part of the song that I want to point out, which is the line just, you kind of keep referencing. It was about the, I wouldn't have lost the battle, dog. I would have lost the bro. Mm-hmm. I think the way we interpret words like humans, we all kind of interpret it differently. I didn't interpret that as him saying, oh, I would have won. Mm-hmm. I think he's trying to break down the difference or the, the reason for his action. Is mm-hmm. like, it's not about what I would have lost. Mm-hmm. It, well, it is about what I would have lost. And instead of y'all thinking about this loss mm-hmm. I'm thinking about this loss yes. I wouldn't have lost a battle dog I would have lost a bro mm-hmm. he's not even saying I don't think he's necessarily saying that he would have won mm-hmm. and lost a bro he's saying he could have lost a battle yeah. and lost a bro as well right. oh my god wait hold on a second people didn't interpret that like that no, no. what they're saying is him but, saying I would have lost a yo, battle dog I would have lost too, a bro yo, to be <laughs> fair what? a couple lines after he's like <laughs> okay like name uh, another nigga rapping out there better yeah, than right, right. Like, yeah. like just because the gun is in the holster don't but, mean it's not deadly well, like, well, all well, that. Well, that line he said that uh, that was said to him right, from correct. somebody else yeah. and his response to that well I don't want to be a I gun. I don't want to be a gun if that's what I if that's what it is. Yeah, I if it's going to be this mudslinging bloodbath, like I don't want that. Yeah, and I I, I would say this, right? Mm. I think wow. all three of us right now on these microphones, we wow. we don't have that that uh that this reaction to it that I've seen so far mm-hmm. where it's like we kicking Cole's back in for what he has humanized himself to be. Yeah. Um so we may not get the, you know, the clicks and the and all that, which is completely fine, but if we're going to be real about it, I think you know you said something very, very profound, which is like, you respect him as a human, yep. you know, and so do I. Um, yes, I am biased with Cole. He mm-hmm. is my favorite rapper. He has been my favorite rapper. And when he was up on that stage talking about, oh, who loves Kendrick Lamar? I was over <laughs> there like, oh, I'm about to cut this stream off. Like, I know Regina was out there pissed off. Like, yeah. us real Cole fans were, were hurt because we were being fans. Mm-hmm. I think we were preparing to say, shit. We got to battle against the the Drake fans and the Cole and the, and the Kendrick fans, and we got to get on the internet and defend our guy because he ain't gonna do it, right? Mm-hmm. When in reality, when it all settles, we're like, dog, like I get it though, mm-hmm. right? Because we were sitting here, we we were we were excited when we first heard in the morning. Mm-hmm. We were excited when uh they got uh when they did the Black Friday versus yeah. like we know these guys are brothers and we know that yeah the, there's two of them in the crew that don't really fuck with each other, but Cole was never the one to seem to be the one with the issues, right? Mm-hmm. And we know what it, it well what it had developed to become, right? That was probably our fears. But the thrill of, oh, the best are about to duke it out. Was that really going to be the best rap battle? Really? Was it? I always ask it. Well, I haven't asked this out loud, but I want to ask y'all two, as fans of hip hop, did the battle between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, which it ended up being, did that prove who was the best rapper? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. I think no, I everybody's sitting there saying, yo, this is rap. This is rap. <clears throat> Cole pulled out. This is rap. It wasn't. It didn't become about rap. It, it ended up not being about rap. Yeah. Right. If 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 it, if it was if it was gonna be about rap and Cole stepped out, cool. It was slap, slap boxing that became 
Like these niggas don't violent. like each other, and there was nothing skillful. Of, oh, I mean, yeah, there was skill. I, mm -hmm. I won't say there was some skill in, mm -hmm. implemented, but mm -hmm. as far as who was who was who was talking about the raps in in a technical accent, mm -hmm. you guys were talking about are these things true or not? Yeah. yeah. Does Drake have a child, another child that he was hiding? Yeah. Is Kendrick Lamar beating on his wife? Mm -hmm. Are they even together? Is 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 if they free the father? Like mm -hmm. that's what we was talking about. <laughs> Not if the bars were great. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, having confidence that my my favorite rapper would have been able to outrap the other two, I still had that confidence. Mm -hmm. And his decision may cloud that 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 uh perception in other people's yeah. minds. But I do think that. This display of rap that Cole did, and I, people scoff over that first verse. That shit was elite, yeah. elite rapping. Um, and the second verse was elite, elite rapping. For him to be able to, to display that kind of messaging with the flows and the pockets he was yeah. getting into is ridiculous. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a better song than people give it credit for. Yeah. They just wanted more spicy content. Right, and Cole's not going to give it to you. Which is the era we're in yeah. now. It's you, like, this is what rap battles are. You have to win over the internet, man. Yeah. You got to say the most scathing thing about yeah. And it's it's the reality. Like it's something I accept, but I'm so glad you brought up who the who was the better rap rapper yeah. aspect of it because nobody it quickly <laughs> quickly pivoted from that. Yeah. Quickly, and it was like I was having this conversation with my boy Ish, also a big J Cole fan. Shout out mm -hmm. to Ish, and we were talking about like the history of rap battles. It was like Drake Push, for example, that had the potential of being just like who's the better rapper, mm -hmm. but. Drake got personal and then Push decided, all right, well, bet. I'm about to review this shit right. that I was holding on to. And right. it was just like, damn, like right. that could have been more, but Drake, Drake didn't want to see it go to that point either. He didn't want to mudsling. He just wanted to rap with niggas. Mm -hmm. Even though he was the one who kind of set it off with the with the uh, Virginia Williams line. Right. And But that was one line in a song that yeah, was elite yeah. song was raps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For <laughs> elite sure. rap. I, I gotta sure. give I feel what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And Drake did go there first. Mm -hmm. But it was elite raps. And Absolutely. even Push on that Adidon yeah. was elite raps in the midst of mm -hmm. the reveals of the mess. Drug dealing aside, ghost he riding was aside. Cooking, you know what I'm saying? Heart to heart about your pride. Like I think every way that every way that Push and, and Drake got personal still displayed some skill. Absolutely. And then there was truth there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We're still asking mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. as elite and Masterful as Kendrick Lamar is, and mm. as elite and masterful as Drake is, we're still asking ourselves: What's Is true? any of this shit <laughs> real? Yeah. And for me, I'm sitting back as a Cole fan. Like, at least I know when he gets on that mic, he's telling you the truth, right? And I'm okay with that, right? So, yeah. sorry, Will. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Like, that was that was good. I, yeah. It's just crazy to me because, like, yeah, I just listen, I listened to the song too a few times. And it's crazy to me, the the one the battle would have lost the brother line that people are really interpreting like the, the way of like like you I mean like you said it's like the low hanging fruit that's all people care about like oh he said he would have won the battle mm -hmm. like nigga fuck the battle my mm -hmm. nigga he's and then if you listen to the song he's always talking about the 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 they was telling us to pick a side and do this and that mm -hmm. like. Yeah, bro. People were doing that. He was. It, 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 it's crazy that it even he felt it at the level. I guess not as crazy because he knows him personally, mm -hmm. and those are his friends. But like, he felt the pick aside even at his height and his level. Because mm -hmm. to us, like, but down here, not even down here, just like you know, being fans of the shit, like, yeah, fans got pick aside. But like, yo, wait, you like, don't wait, have to. Really like, I mean, yeah. And, and, and like, the crazy course, thing I, is, I do have my side. Yeah, but. the crazy thing is, you really didn't have to pick a side. But like, you know, what I'm saying that just goes into the fandom. Have you were saying like, yo, we have to go against all three of these niggas, and like, you know, and this and that. Like the fact that Cole's talking about it on such a personal level that even at his, and a lot of people think, you know, a lot of people think these stars and people are absolved from feeling like there's are being in these moments or of yeah. questioning themselves or anything mm -hmm. and like yeah he felt it even at at, at his height of his career and his mm -hmm. life and, and this and that and yeah. saying like yo I would have lost I would have lost a friend over this shit I would have mm -hmm. lost I would have lost niggas over this shit like and this shit it really derailed a lot for him because he yeah. was he was on the future run of a lifetime for the last mm -hmm. few years and he still mm -hmm. is get, yeah, yeah his features have been great but people people receive them differently they mm -hmm. assess yeah, him yeah. differently yeah. oh I don't want to hear him saying he's the best because you know he walked away from the battle whatever yeah. um, timing is kind of crazy too right like that like that drop and Cole March, was yeah. in the midst of rolling out this might delete later project mm -hmm. and the whole you know I'm, I'm sure it was you know gonna lead into the fall off uh, album. Um, and you can you can tell everybody who listened to that project knows that 
Trade the Truth and Ibiza what is the last song on there. Mm-hmm. And then you got this awkward ass this record on the end. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, what is this? Right? Yeah. And you it, you know Cole in his spirit, it's not about the skill thing. It's just about who he got to talk about. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, that's your dog. Yeah. And what? You got to shoot back at him over fuck the big three? Mm-hmm. Nigga, it's the... That's all That's all you're really shooting at? Yeah. And you getting pressured like, oh, we... Because ne- you know what? We never had a moment like this. Yeah. Ever. Uh, especially him. It's weird, right? Like, he was never tested in that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody mm-hmm. ever tested him. And it came from mm-hmm. his mans who was really just trying to really, really, really get at the other nigga. Mm-hmm. Because if rap is a sport, mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar got dissed. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. From, first from, shooter, yep. he, no, no, not even. He got dissed on 7 Minute Drill. Oh, yeah. The song yeah. exists. Yeah. Fuck taking it off of streaming. It exists. Yeah. So for for him to hear that record and drop Euphoria, 616, Meet the Grams, not like that, and not say a word about Cole. The only word we hear about Cole is Dick Cole foul. I don't know mm-hmm. why he's still pretending. That means he understands, like, mm-hmm. damn, I, I'm, I'm spared him. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, not spared him. Not, not, not necessarily he, spared, he, but it's like, like yeah, yo, it's I, like, damn, I, my, my man's called a straight, but I yeah. still got to handle business. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't mentioned Cole after that. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So for me, that's. Kendrick, Some diabolical, diabolical nigga right mm-hmm. there. But that's another, that's a human, that's a human aspect. Like, yo, my man's went on that stage, apologize. They probably had some behind the scenes convos, they, whatever they the case did. may be. And it's like, yo, I get it. Cole don't got to explain that to us. That's why he ain't getting on that track and say nothing about Kendrick. Facts. I'm sure there's understanding there. It's Drake on the other side who he probably can't get to right now because Drake is, probably really feels a way because he definitely feels like everybody's against him. Mm-hmm. I understand that shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, bro, let me tell you, I really, st- I, I still fuck with you. You still yeah. my dog. I still appreciate everything you've done for me. And do not let these fucking talking heads on the internet sway that. Mm-hmm. You are my mans, bro. Yeah. And this rap battle shit, it is weird. And I don't want no parts of it. I'm yeah. free. You should be free too. I told that nigga to get back to work. Like, get back to fucking work, <laughs> I love bro. that. I love get that. back to work and do and get back to what we was doing this shit for. Facts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about nigga, this song we'll, again. <laughs> we'll get an epiphany. <laughs> Gang, yeah, like, I was just the whole end of this shit. Yeah. The end of this song is amazing. Like, because it, it's like, first of all, the samples fire too. Like, oh yeah, my god, song. the samples <laughs> amazing. I'll never get tired of the dead president slash yeah, the, the Lou, Lonnie Liston Woo! Smith, the Garden of Peace. Like, it was it was going crazy. But the end is special too because he's. Really Tap him back into your magic pen is what's imperative. Remind so, these folks why we do it. It's yeah. not for beef and it's for speaking our thoughts, pushing yeah. ourselves, mm-hmm. reaching the charts, mm-hmm. reaching your mind, deep in your heart, to like, screaming yeah. to find, emotions to touch, he something is flew on that. He, he skated. And like, then he ends it off once again by saying, y'all niggas ain't stopping him. I think that's the that's most a, important That's another part. thing too. He's letting y'all Gangsta. know. No matter what Gangsta. y'all say. I, like, I'm expressing Gangsta. this to y'all and I, I'm yeah. getting it out because mm-hmm. this is what I do. I'm expressing Don't myself. Don't get it fucked up. Yeah. But nobody's going to stop J. Cole. Yeah. And I, I think the other thing that I've been, that I maybe struggled with initially, but I accept now, is Cole in his mind, and shout out to Wongo and Jordan. We had a discussion about the song, of course, when it came out. Mm. And Wongo, I think it was Wongo that brought up a good point. He said, you know, Cole's perspective is all's fair in love and war, but he's focused on the love part. He mm-hmm. really thinks I'm doing my best to remain impartial in this shit, and I have a right to do that. So yes, Drake, you're my man's, but I'm gonna jump on Rocky tracks, I'm gonna jump on Daylight tracks, I'm gonna jump on Future tracks, but I'm still your friend. Like I- I'm impartial in this shit, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, you know what? As much as if you're picking a side that's not acceptable, that's how life is. Like I'm friends with people who aren't friends with other people that I'm friends with. Like, mm-hmm. th- like that's real life. And so many of these niggas can't apply, can't do real life applications to this rap shit because they view it as entertainment. They view it as WWE. Mm-hmm. WWE is layered. Yeah, 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 I can't keep calling rap WWE and not acknowledging there are layers in these storylines. Yeah. Like, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just black and white. Like, shit, shit is colorful. Shit is complicated. It's complex. Like, yeah, you, your mind is going to get challenged. And so... I've I've come to really accept and and appreciate that about J Cole. He's he's tripled down on like yeah, I I fuck with you, Drake. You're my dog. We toured. We made great music together. Like we're genuine friends in real life. But I'm a rapping ass nigga too. So if Rocky wants me to get on a track and bar up, I'm a bar up. If, but who's if to future, say, but bro, who's to say that that Rocky track wasn't done mad long ago? That's who's true. Say, that's that's also true. Yeah, like verse wasn't done mad long yeah. ago. Like all these verses. Might have been done before all this shit Absolutely. transpired. Absolutely factual. And they people are saying, well, Cole has the power to say, yo, take my take my verse off. Well, which uh, he does. He does. Yeah, I he know, does. but bro, for what? 
And, or, and that's the thing. What? If you if you if you allow the internet to affect your thinking, and granted, I, I sat on this pod myself and said. It seems pretty clear. Drake not fucking with Cole, so mm-hmm. Cole's just rapping and doing what whatever with whoever. But now that we got, I was waiting. For, I was waiting to hear from him. Mm-hmm. Like as much as I can't wait till Drake starts dropping again. As much as I'm looking to see when Kendrick is drop again, I really want to hear from Cole about this particular situation. Mm-hmm. You can't end on that speech at, at Dreamville right. Fest. <laughs> like you, you cannot leave us on that. I'm not that one, gang. I'm on. That's the other part, bro. I'm, people have been saying, or I have, what the things I have been seeing is, yo. Cole keeps explaining himself, and I'm in my head. In my head, I said, "Damn, y'all think he's explaining himself, bro?" He said, "He he said, he he has one song about it, mm-hmm. and he addressed it on stage." Three minute speech, bro. Mm-hmm. He keeps explaining. Him. He don't say well, nothing. What are you talking about? Like <laughs> he don't. Cole's the most non online nigga ever. Like <laughs> in that time, we got a Thames verse. Mm-hmm. We got. Uh, grippy, grip, we got grippy. Shout out to <laughs> talk, We was talking about that grippy. last week. It's, <laughs> I like the verse. We got. Daylight verse, we got a uh, ASAP verse. Yeah, we get all these rap verses that he ain't saying a he word about no rap beef about. And then he comes out and says it. Oh, you gotta stop it, bro. Explaining yourself, to these niggas cold. That's what's the problem, bro. He ain't even saying nothing. Yeah, and it's like, well, when did speaking up for yourself become wrong? Like, mm-hmm. especially because y'all are building a narrative against him. I'm biased. He's the only one who who could denounce that shit, and I <laughs> I, I, I fell victim to it too. Maul did that rant on Rory and Maul and said, yo, Drake not fucking with these niggas. Cole's choosing up. I was like, that's what it seems like to me, too. But now we hear from Cole's perspective, he wants to make it clear. Because Drake might really be believing that. Like, yo, we don't know what conversations they're having behind the scenes, if they're speaking at all. But seeing him work with the niggas who you were against, well, what are you supposed to believe if he doesn't make himself clear? So he made himself clear, and I appreciated it so much i want to talk about the masterfulness of the execution of the song okay because the first verse he really provides a, a really in-depth look at himself you know he starts young jermaine walk the straight and narrow minimum wage jobs for the narrow but still my mind was on the zeros mm-hmm. i fiend for the perks that was seen flipping birds so so we were skipping church with my eyes so on the sparrow sad. gives so much background on his life goes into um i was mike and red leather trying to tell him to stop you you better beat it before you see the heavy metal get popped Yo. He was a mean ass wing with a hell of a shot, but if no Yo. team draft king, he gonna bet on the block. Yo, this guy, his Michael Jackson flips <laughs> wordplay have been ridiculous. Elite. I, my my favorite line is which I use on one of my caption was uh, "Jealous niggas want to know how my rhymes grew." Mano y mano, I'm Bono, I'm U times too. Yeah. I love the way he oh, put that shit. God. That was the yeah. first yeah. bar that yeah. after the I on the Sparrow joint. That he was the first part that made me stand up. I'm like, just Whoa. his cadence, his cadence and his diction of it yes. was just. So good. Um, you can't relate unless your father was not around. Your mother went out and found someone else and then brought him around. And the salaries then combined. When they married, it brought you out of that poverty. Then you moved to a soft little part of town. So that when you're back in the hood, you feel awkward about it now. And your confidence start to drown. But the rapping gave you some positive thoughts. So you jot them down. Like, he, that storytelling... Like it, 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 nigga, it, it, it was it was Stephen King esque, bro. Like nigga, it, 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 I'm it, it, it about... really sucks you in. Like you can't be mad at that. You, I can't. And again, I, I also love Cole too. He's one of my favorite rappers ever. So I can't find anything negative with that. Just... And so it was the perfect setup to where he gets people to empathize with him, and then he gets into verse two, where he obviously gets into you know, Benjamin Button, Cole's flow, reverse, reverse time, time. find another. Like, man, you got to search, search primes. primes. I'm scaling heights higher than birds can Bro, perch. Really know the words Trying like to that. be something, hoping that Bro, it just comes <laughs> to my cursed mind. I'm sorry, man. Hey, man. It's, it's, it's like, I've listened to this so... I, no, I haven't I mean, played everybody... a song on repeat like this all year. Like, Bro, like, all my real rap friends are, like, not real rap friends, but, like, journal, like you, like... I seen Cam. Shout out my boy Cam. I Cam mean, loves the shit. Cam Cam's not the biggest J. Cole fan either. I know. That's why... <laughs> yeah. And that's why when I'm seeing it, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And this must be, like, Ironically, dope. my favorite part of the song is... Ride to it. Oh yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. It. It's so simple. Yeah, bro. But that's how you know Cole is a is a is a, is a master he at knows. this because he knows how to make a rap record feel like yo. I I I, I was literally driving yesterday and I rolled the windows down and I'm like, nah, I gotta play this on loop, bro. I was, just, I was, I was just really just... drunk in the Uber Saturday night. I, this is the first thing I played. Normally, I might play some Drew Picasso. Mm-hmm. I might play some <laughs> R and B. Nigga, I put on Port Antonio on repeat. Yeah. But he he sucks you in. He he gets you like empathetic towards him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second verse, you know, he starts off obviously like Dirk. I'm smirking and trying to besmirch mine. If certain times where the fate get told it is wise, I can see hate in both of your eyes. But the third's blind. He's saying things people will agree with. Mm-hmm. And so when he eventually delivers the lines that everyone cares about, you know, 
I wouldn't have lost a battle, bro. I would have lost a bro. I would have gained a foe. All the gun stuff, like all that, talking about how he was capable. You're so like, you're in like agreement with him for so long that I feel like you received those lines better. If this, if the second verse would have been the first verse, I think it would have been critiqued a little more. So <laughs> it like, would have been nasty. I yeah. <laughs> so so like so so he set it up well. The first verse was the alley oop, and then he and then he hit you with a slam dunk in the second verse. So I just I wanted to really give him flowers for the structure and execution of that. And he's all those storytelling songs that he does, whether it's like lights please uh whether it's um uh wet dreams even though people clown wet dreams it, like it's carnival songs bro. those yeah. those mm-hmm. songs where he's doing a narrative he sets three them adolescence, up that whole album man. so well Sick. he's he is a he is so great at executing a concept and like building up to it re- really giving you those nuggets of information and getting you invested into the storyline getting you to getting you into the flow state um, I want to say something, man. And I don't know if we're going to bleep this out because I got something to say to like another famous podcaster. Okay. But Maul from Rory and Maul is very disappointing. Mm. Um, and it's not because of his opinion, but it's the way, about, it's the way he goes about it. Mm. Um, I, think he, I think he's literally in this, in this zone of where he's picked a side. He's mm-hmm. lost. And he, he cannot, yeah. cannot discuss he's in too deep. the topic <laughs> Without, like, without getting overly emotional, mm-hmm. he's sitting in a room with three other people, yeah, who are being a bit objective, mm-hmm. who have called out Cole, who are fans of Cole, and have have told you about their disappointment of him, mm-hmm. and he is the one person who is on the podcast as well that is saying that he is objective and he loves Cole, he la da 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 la 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 la. But the emotion that that this situation is evoking out of you is does not look like somebody who loves somebody. Yeah. It seems like you're trying to show somebody that you on a side. Yeah. yeah. And it's nasty. And I don't know if you're just doing it for the clicks and the reactions. If you, you know, you're watching somebody that you used to work with and looking at their method of how they used to cook and how what when we made y'all go up. Mm-hmm. But it's it's disgusting to see. Yeah, I I, I really wanted to stay away from opinions on this because I had so many thoughts in my head about this but i did listen to the joe budden pod i listened to rory and maul um i listened to someone else talk about this and i thought they had good things to say but maul's takes definitely like because rory was bringing up a good example he brought up how drake withdrew from his battle with push because he felt like it got very good example we talked about it before and maul was like that's different why you keep bringing up drake like i'm like it's an example and it's a good example Mm -hmm. too like because that's the thing there are some Drake stands out there who are like Drake ain't lose that battle to push me. I, I me, I'm, which is insane. Which is just hey, I mean like yes, Drake is still the bigger artist. He yeah. he, he won the war. Yeah, sure. That battle he lost. Drake like, wins and, that life, but he yeah, definitely lost. He that, he lost that battle, and and, and I own it because he gave us a great summer of music after that, yeah. and great years of music after For that sure. too. But he lost that battle, yeah. and I think there are some Drake fans who just accept it and we just moved on because like it is what it is. It doesn't it doesn't. Like to to the real rap niggas, the hashtag real rap fans, to the to the niggas who are in who used to be on message boards and niggas in rap radar comments and all these comments, yeah. Like Drake, you know, Dude, that's it, why Drake it's, is it's, it's a chick in his bro. armor. Cause Drake could do whatever the fuck he wants and he, he he's done a lot of the wildest shit in hip hop sure. as well. Bro. For sure. But he is still top you know what I'm saying? It's kind of top dog. Yo, shout out to you, Drake. But yeah, like they, they they brought up a Rory brought up a really good example, and Maul was just not hearing it. I'm like, bro, it's 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 not it's obviously not exactly the same. But what they did was the same thing. This went too far for me. I'm stepping out of this. Mm-hmm. And it, it went too far for Cole in the sense of uh, he received information mm-hmm. that he, he knew, okay, this is not the territory I'm trying to be in. Yeah. Whereas Drake had to get hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, sure. I don't think niggas, oh, well, do y'all think that if 7-Minute Drill is still on streaming and available for everybody and just Cole does not engage at all after dropping that record, things are that much different? Um, I think if he released, I think if he stood on 7-Minute Drill, I think Kendrick probably would have had more to say to and, him. And, and, and it would have been a little, he probably and would have changed a little bit of the battle, right? Yeah, and then we, we, we might have gotten a, a back and forth between Cole and Kendrick as well. Okay, which, now what about? What if Cole drops my delete later, mm-hmm. a couple weeks after the whole like that shit, mm-hmm. and he doesn't say a word? What do we say? Cole, you pussy. People would have said that. Mm. People would have said that. Uh, yeah, it's lo- I think Cole understands. That I, I wouldn't have because for me, for me, from the beginning, while like that was obviously <laughs> directed at Cole too. What people have wanted for years was Drake Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Cole was never in it. Would I like to see Cole engage in a battle just to see him do it? 
Yes, yeah. but I want him to engage in it when he wants to do it. This whole thing felt like he never wanted to be in it. Right. Like, Seven Minute Drill, while I, I thought the lines about Kendrick's discography were funny, mm-hmm. I'm like, he didn't really go there. Yeah. Like, he, he, like it, it, felt, it felt like he was in the booth kind of like, mm, should I do it? Should I do it? And he did it, but it, it, didn't, it didn't feel like he was fully there. Yeah. So and some minute drill is good actually. It, I just want people to understand. That. It is a good it's, rap song. Again, content wise for a beef, <laughs> it didn't do it for people, and, and I get that. It is a good rap song for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, man, like, and the, the reactions to this, and you know, we've talked about a lot about how you don't have to pick a side. Like mm-hmm. that's stupid. But the more I listen to the song, the more I think about put myself in J Cole's shoes. The more I think about his perspective, the more I think about how I felt in April compared to how I f- how I feel now, right. and seeing again, it's 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 I said what I said. Culture people don't want to change their minds. Right. When people have their minds made up, they don't want to believe it. The confirmation bias is running wild. It's at the point now; these niggas got me on J Cole's side, bro. Like like that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, they, they got me fully on Cole's we side. We got snacks over here too, man. Bro, Come like on, man. it's good. it's crazy. <laughs> I'm just like, we have to be hearing two different songs. Like, yes, as a rap fan, as a rapper, as a nigga who thinks with that very narrow-minded lens, Cole Pussy. What he did was pussy. Yeah, it like... was whack. Absolutely. But I don't know. And maybe I'm crazy for, like, adding a human aspect to this. Maybe maybe I'm pussy, too. I don't know. Like, like... The song was human. <laughs> Bro. The song was human. What the fuck are you supposed to the, do? That was the most, like, and you brought this up when we talked about Kendrick a couple weeks ago. I do agree vulnerability is a superpower. Like, v- people who are capable of being vulnerable, yeah. you could be vulnerable and still be a real nigga. Two ex- yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm vulnerable, but I'm 100%. also a real nigga. 100%. Cole is a, a vulnerable, real nigga. And when you can stand on your vulnerability, it makes you even more of a real nigga. Mm-hmm. People are just, because Twitter is also a jokes over facts type place. So it's, I'm not going to acknowledge this nigga made a rational human decision. I, I'm going <laughs> to call him pussy because it's going to get me more likes and retweets and more, and more laughs. And you know that, and you ultimately just have to like be really good at filtering like what you read and how you assess it. Like I don't take a lot of these people seriously, but it was some people who I whose opinions I respect. Who I don't care. No, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like he's pussy. That's whack. Don't don't tell me you could battle if you step out. I'm just like my yeah, nigga. Did you time. listen to Did you listen to the song? It makes you cringe. Every he time. made a very clear explanation as to why. So the jokes over fact shit on the internet is. Eh. It's got a lot of people fucked up. Mm-hmm. I can't lie to you. Like I'm talking about, like because they talk like this in real life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I said. I said this they, like, 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 real like, like, life, like, bro. Like, they, like I, it got people fucked up in like real life. My real, mind bro. is blown. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, Yo, I wanted to ask before Kendrick Drake, uh, before Drake take Drake off the table. What was the last rap battle? So mine is pushed as well. Like, when was the last time two rappers? Got on wax and went back and forth. Literally removed Drake. So that means you can't say Drake and Push. You can't say Drake and uh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm and can't say Drake think, and Meek. I'm trying to think right now. I can't say Drake and Common either. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you if you remove that boy from all of this, and people, you know, people talk it's about a long this, is, t- this is rap. This is what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> it's the essence. We were storing the feeling, my nigga. It's a long. It's a long time. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, bro. For real, bro. Yeah, but it's a long time, bro. And you, I don't. I don't know. It got so bad that niggas want friends to to no. to, to fight. So I, all right, like, cool. this thirst for beef. I don't, I don't get it. Trust me, I'm a fifty fan. I know. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Kissing but beans, Hov and Nas. Like I get real, it, but bro, yeah, be for real. Be for real. Be this is what yo these. Kendrick and Kendrick and Drake might really dislike each other, mm-hmm. but bro, you had three niggas in a ring who really like came up together and like, bro, this is not the fight y'all wanted. Yeah, they're heavyweights in their own right, bro, but they was, come on, that's, that's, look where it got. Go that's watch URL. Shit, too. That's like the <laughs> fight. That's the fight you really. I, yeah, I didn't really want this fight, bro. bro it's, really, like, like nobody has beef no more, you, bro. You, niggas, you remember uh, niggas be cool. Man, you remember <laughs> Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather? How long niggas wanted that, and then right. we got it, and they were both kind of like at the tail end of their career. Black luster. This is this kind of how, how I felt. I was oh, like, th- this battle was supposed to happen over a decade yeah. ago. You give me this in 2014, yeah, 2015. It's just, I'm, yeah. I'm, yo, listen, I. Right. It's I'm different. tapped in. I'm it's fresh different. out. I'm fresh out of college. No, like, they're they're hungry. Oh, they were still man. trying to find their positioning. That's real like shit, man. they established themselves, found their lanes, separated from one another. Mm-hmm. Like it's it just 
Come on, yeah. You Damn. give, you give it, me. It was better on paper than. If you in give real me life. nothing was the same Drake versus Pimper Butterfly Drake. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's different. That's Come different. On, man. That's real different. So y'all think y'all think rap beef is uh overrated? Not overrated. No. Not overrated. I just think that things have changed. Okay. There things is, have changed. There is a thirst for it. There is a thirst. Which for I it. get. Yeah. But in this era we're in, as Kojo said so eloquently earlier, and I'm because people have not talked about that enough. It's not about who the better rapper is. And it doesn't decide who the better rapper is either. Push beat Drake. Is Push a better rapper than Drake? Is Push a bigger artist than Drake? They'll, they'll debate it. They'll they debate will. It. It's debatable because but that's what on. rap is. But like, come on. Well, like, we know what it is. Push is an elite rapper. I, 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 I'm a Push fan. Lifelong Push fan. But I, I don't think he's better than Drake. I don't. Personally, I don't. And that, that's not what it's about. It's about how can I tear down your character? Mm-hmm. How can I make you look bad to the internet and the world? Right? Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. And so it's mm-hmm. just like... Rap beef don't interest me that much. Um, my boy J5. But I watch battle rap, bro. Yeah. That's and I'm sitting there, I'm telling you, every, at the end of every URL battle, it's only opinions. Mm-hmm. It's, there's, no, there's no judges sitting at the end, at, ta- at the end of the table like, all right, you won. Mm-hmm. Uh, you won uh, round one, you won round two, you won round three. Like, yo, at yeah. the end of the day, they leave it for us to sit there and say, oh, he got three old. It's two one her. It's two one him. Yeah. It's the, yeah, that's what rap, that's what rap battles is. It's always going to be about an opinion. Right? There's no structure to it where it's proven mm. facts. And that's the danger of looking at rap like a sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 basketball. If the score is 96 to 95, who's the winner? The <laughs> team with 96. Simple math. There's no questioning that. You could say, oh, the refs made a bad call. They would have made that free throw. It didn't happen. They didn't yeah. get a chance to shoot the free throw. The game was over. One team had more points than the other. There, there, that's, that doesn't exist in rap. There's Jordan no got closure. six rings. <laughs> he got six. That means he won the championship six times like you can't take that can't away take you can't change <laughs> yeah, that you can't you, can't, change, change, you yeah. can't narrative your way out of that you can't do all these words niggas love you can't there's nothing you can do about that in oh, rap man. there's no scorecard you can come up with the most intrinsic criteria it still don't mean shit at all it's this is an opinion based subjective game i will tell you my my young boys my high school my high school ball players that i that i that i'm connected with I'm gonna promise you and tell you they don't look at Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick as their top dogs, bro. Yeah, they don't. If I talk to them yeah. about hip hop, oh god, they, they are talking about other guys. Mm-hmm. So, is their opinion on the on the landscape invalid? No, no it's exactly. just theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's it's tight. it just like as much more as more people I, gotta hear what you just said. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what I said, more people gotta hear what he just said. No, but absolutely, like, dude, like, absolutely. Go ahead. And it's so funny too because I think about uh, months ago. Uh, my boy J5 will knows him like J5 was saying, um, yo, I don't really want to see this battle happen. Like, I don't think it'll be good for the overall landscape. And at the time I was like, OK, I, I, I didn't see the vision at, at first. But when you see what this has become, when you see how it's become co-opted, when you see how people are obsessed and clinging to this shit and not a, like they're at the point where they're historically revising J. Cole's career. And it's like. <laughs> I've seen the the sleepy narratives. I get it. You know what? If J. Cole's music is boring to you, I can respect that for you. I don't agree. I I, I love that nigga. I, I think his catalog, I don't think there's anything I dislike in his catalog. His early albums, they haven't aged the best, but like he has a pretty strong catalog. Hey, like out, I, 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 I love Cole. And I, I think he's an elite rapper. I, I don't hear, t- I'm, I'm not hearing too many arguments niggas can say that would change my mind on that. Mm-hmm. But that's that's what this has become like, and it's just it's just nasty, man. It's just, it's really nasty. Damn. Imagine a fifteen year career thrown away by a three minute speech. Man. Please cut the shit. My God, cut the oh shit. My God. <laughs> cut it's the like shit. you know what? And, and if this is what ends his run, well, oh, salute please. on a fifteen year run. Oh please, because niggas don't make it that far. <laughs> niggas don't even make it past six months. Come on, bro. bro like, let alone, boy, what? Come on, man. nigga. Built from I'm the biased. Ground up. I'm biased. Where's where's my camera? Where's one? <laughs> I'm biased. Me too. I'm biased. I'm biased too. <laughs> Cold world, nigga. Proud of it, nigga. <laughs> Proud of it. But no, oh, that's man. tight. <laughs> Port of Antonio was a fantastic mm-hmm. track. One of the best rap songs. Why was it named that? Port Antonio. Know? That's a, a town in Jamaica. Okay. I, I'm guessing the photo that you see on the that's YouTube where he was thing, at, that's yeah. where he was at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he got a lot of Jamaican homies. There's probably out there. So, you know, that's probably like his time stamp, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's yeah. okay. I respect it. Which is, I mean, Damn, great. Man. I love it. I'm I coming it. to you for all the J. Cole facts. Yeah, nah, facts. Yeah, he's he's tapped in. in. He's tapped in. That nigga in. is locked <laughs> in, boy. Fantastic record. Um, I, 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 I appreciate. Like, I, 
at first I was like, he didn't need to do this. But as I listened to it more and then as I saw the reaction, it's like, you know what? He he didn't need to do this, but I'm glad he did. Because people, even the people who don't want to open their minds and accept it, they need to hear it from him. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all we needed was to hear it. And he kind of rehashed some things that he said in the um in the speech at Dreamville Fest. But one thing I did notice, you know, he dedicated a bunch of lines and saying, like, Drake, you my nigga, all that. He didn't really do the same for Kendrick. Mm-hmm. At first, I was like, well, he didn't need to because the Dreamville Fest speech was about Kendrick. Right. Like he said, yo, that's my nigga. Like, I love you, bro. I think you're one of the greatest. Like, if you want to if you want to throw bars at me, like, I'll take it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, like, all right. This was this, especially because the narrative recently was all right he's drake clearly isn't fucking with him anymore and cole's not fucking with drake either Mm -hmm. he's doing records with all these niggas who drake don't fuck with but so now it's like you know it's obviously got me speculating and this is like so like uh what's the word like i feel like a fucking tabloid writer like oh so are cole and kendrick friends like you know what's going on with them you know what we need to some what needs to be i guess what needs to be addressed is the 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 cole foul i don't know why you still pretending line because that's like, what you talking about, bro? Yeah, and when, we, where? When are he doing foul? What are you talking about? We talked about that last week. We talked about that. We need to know. I, I honestly believe a bunch of things Kendrick said were really just to get the internet against Drake. And it worked. <clears throat> it worked. People take everything Kendrick says at face value. Mm-hmm. Granted, we don't know, but Drake might have did, did cold foul. Well, we don't know. Well, we don't know. Well, we don't speculate. But it, 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 one of the most interesting things to me throughout the battle was the fact that niggas immediately believed everything Kendrick said. Bro. And then everything Drake said, they're like, nah. Nope, bro, no way. they was throwing, bro. Pedophile's going to be attached to Drake's name oh, that's so forever, terrible. bro. That's so terrible. And it's like, if you're really and not doing those things. now it's got people loosely things, using the word. Yeah, yeah. Use, loose, yeah like That loosely. shit has a lot of power. Bro, what? <laughs> Niggas' yeah. lives are ruined, and people like, 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 bro, you can't just throw that word around. And the fact that, like you said, People were saying that and niggas was believing it ASAP. Like, no fact checking, no nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's won. Yeah. Because the he, song is a slap. Yeah, the song <laughs> is a slap. Okay, he, yeah, he was he was friends with Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown when she was <laughs> at the height of her career. And they were both like, yeah, like, the fuck? Like, bro, yeah. I don't know, bro. People are just, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've I've learned at this point as a, as a journalist, as a rap fan, and as a human being that trying to change people's minds is futile. I know I can't change my minds with my opinion. J. Cole can't change his mind, change people's minds, even with his massive platform and his massive fan base. I just wish rap fans could be a bit more open minded, like really take in something. Because I, I, based on the reactions, I just know so many people pressed play with their minds already made up. I, I went into it with my mind, my mind made up. Like that shit in April was whack. But then hearing the song changed my mind because I'm willing to do that. Like, you're not less intelligent or wrong for getting new information Mm -hmm. and changing your mind on something. That makes you even smarter that you're willing to humble yourself and be like, okay, I'm going to submit to this information from this person who is either a direct source Mm -hmm. or is more informed than me. That doesn't make you weak. That doesn't make you like, it's not a negative thing. Like, that's a great quality to have is being teachable i guess for lack of a better word and it, it's it, it, it's it was frustrating like it, it made me not even want to put that thread out but i just saw a tweet after tweet and i was like you know what man um i, I usually keep my discourse to group chats and stuff but i'm like you know what <laughs> man group chat, yeah. i i will deal with whatever anyone has to say to me about this thread so i put it out and granted there was only like one person who they quoted the tweet where i was like i, I said i'm biased but with nuance and they were like you said all that just to say you're biased. I'm like, damn, you missed every fucking point. Like, you missed, <laughs> you said you all of missed that. every yes. fucking <laughs> point that. just to acknowledge. Yes, I said I'm biased. So you you calling me out for admitting I'm like, Pro- all right. The point. Like, like, what, like, 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 bro, people are retarded, bro. It's like, like a paradox of like idiotness. It's mind boggling. Like, it, 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 <laughs> it, like, I'll be sitting in my crib laughing at what niggas have to say about yeah, this bro. shit sometimes and the stances that they take. Like this beef has really revealed. Th- there's more dumb niggas in the world than than, than, oh, we, than we made. Bro, I'm trying to tell I might you, be bro. dumb, but listen, I'm, I'm not telling you. You're very intelligent. There's a lot of niggas. There's a lot of talented gentlemen. It's a lot of niggas in there that was doing real karate kung fu shit and, and being like, you know, blah, 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 the, the Kendrick this and that, and really can't <laughs> and really can't comprehend over like two sentences. Like, yeah. bro, it's. And I think that's what made me fall in love with music the most is the is the humanity of it. Like when you think about a 50 cent, yes, he was 
he he was a gangster and mm-hmm. businessman and this this like just giant but he was also very human in his music mm-hmm. lil wayne open about his family struggles shooting himself his mm-hmm. drug issues all that like all these people who became larger than life and super successful they had a human aspect yeah. to it which is why people connected to them so much Jay-Z, you kendrick must, himself yeah. <laughs> like Jay-Z, his song you must love me one of my favorite songs yeah man, nigga, like, verses that's the that's a bunch of verses about straight vulnerability yeah nigga man Kanye. so yeah. i'm just like <laughs> how, how do y'all worship these people and one of the their most defining aspects be their humanity and then you just selectively choose when to remove the humanity of rap mm-hmm. like right. that's why rap Rap was started because, like, it's the storytelling of it and the expression of it. Like, that's that's why it's grown to the level that it is. That's why even as much as people clown him, Logic's, you know, song with, <laughs> Yo. with the suicide hotline Yo. number, it resonated so much because, bro, that's a real thing people deal with, bro. Like, it's not funny, bro. Like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it was, it was, no, like, no, no, it's crazy. crazy. You know what? No, you know what? Yo, I get it. Because for that to be one of my, like, bro, it was so crazy. That to be one of my examples. I get it. I get and it. And you know what's funny? <laughs> I saw a video. I saw a video recently making funny, making fun of it. And the whole day, I was, I was, I was running around singing in my head. I don't want to die. The nigga's like, "What's wrong with you?" I was like, "Yo, I just heard that logic." But hey, man, that that shit touch touch somebody. It it works absolutely. Like, and you you could just name like song after song after song where like these these rappers use their skills to convey human emotions, Mm -hmm. and it connects with people even more. So I'm just, I'm just always blown away at niggas just looking at the surface taking the lowest hanging fruit i'm like damn sometimes i, I want to climb that tree and like get that apple that's all the way up there uh, that that really elite looking apple that no one else is gonna get i want to climb and get that and, and and see see you know see what it's tasting like compared to the shit that anyone could get like <laughs> i feel good knowing that i did not give my opinion on that song at all mm-hmm. to my, like my, my twitter followers like, yeah. i did not i was like yeah. wow I'm sitting here in bliss. I listen to it on a beach, on a plane, mm -hmm. in a car, and didn't say a word to nobody about it. I felt great. I feel like that's the thirst for people to say how they feel to people Mm -hmm. is also another problem. Like, oh God, that's a people gotta hear how I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, that's another thing too. I got a nigga with 339 followers. (laughs) Like, nah, I gotta get this song. I gotta let niggas know. Streets need my opinion. (laughs) People be like, people be like, yeah, people do that a lot with like me and just like in general. Like, yo, what what do you think? Like, nigga, I don't know what you think. I'm not a group chat. Asking me too. Yeah, just like, bro, I die. I mean, yeah, I love the group chat. I just enjoy it. Like, I don't know. Like yeah. niggas just yeah, bro. A lot of people are always looking for that the jokes over facts thing, and then like the other foot to drop to put the jokes over you mm-hmm. with, for the fact that you said. It's like yeah, I don't know, bro. People are crazy. Yeah. Um. So, listeners, those are our thoughts on Port Antonio. Quite a long uh discussion, but I, I loved it, and you know, I I enjoyed that. Like, n- not that I want to have these conversations with like minded people. I would love to talk to someone who completely opposes me on this song so we can have that exchange yeah. just to see the other perspective. But what what I appreciated that y'all were able to take from the song was also the human aspect of it. Because if you're only listening to this as a pure rap fan, then you're you're missing so much from it. So much. So much good shit that I think you can even relate to as a person. It, it made me think about arguments that I've had in the past with friends and how I didn't want to take it to a certain level. And the arguments where I did take it to a certain level and I lost someone that I really cared about. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, I don't know. And I, maybe I'm wired differently. Maybe it's the, the emotional cancer nigga in me. I, I don't know what it is, but Big like, C's, man. but I'm just like, <laughs> bro, like I, 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 I wish, I wish y'all would just expand your minds a little bit, just, just a little bit. Cause this is a gem right here. This is truly a gem right here. So salute to you, Cole, man. I, I really hope you're at peace. I can't wait to hear what more you got coming, man. Once again, Thank you, brother Kojo, for coming through. Short notice, <laughs> we told hey, you we, we caught him at the perfect time. He made some time for us in his busy schedule. You know, graphic designer for everyone in New York and across the world, and hooping and cleaning his sneakers and all that, everything <laughs> yeah, that he God. does. Dude, the man is busy, uh, but man. always good to have you come through, man. No, Thank no you. No doubt, yo. Listen, you know, I, I I never miss I never miss a you know episode. I'm, I'm a fan first. You know, I'm a supporter. 
Um, and you know, I've I've loved what you were doing back with Nick and how it's developed. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been you know on your phone letting you know what I think about the new iteration of the pod. You yes. know what I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm proud of, of what you guys have like developed to become. I see the comfortability growing and yeah. I see it. Facts. I'm a fan of it. I keep supporting, keep pushing y'all, man. So proud of you know proud of what Stay Busy has become, and I'm here to watch it continue to go up. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you, brother. And so for Kojo, who you can to tell me where to follow you. Well, you guys can follow me at Joe underscore Got Game on everything. Uh, that's J O underscore Got Game. Um, yeah, man, that's on my Twitter, my Instagram, TikTok, um, and yeah, um, yeah. Alman's right. You 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 don't really know what you'll get from me, but you'll get a little bit of everything from me. And um, <laughs> this, nigga, out- this nigga can hoop, man. Yeah, yeah, he's a baller. <laughs> this nigga Yo, can hoop, man. I, I'm washed right now. That's what's like, <laughs> like the version of me that y'all seeing right now is. Uh, I don't go above the rim no more. I'm not as fast with the with Damn. the moves, but I still. I, you can I, dunk. I used to be able to get up there. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I can still dunk, but I just choose not to. Okay. I, I have I have oh, a he's, job. He's more... <laughs> like, like yeah, I go up there one time. Yo, I was hooping yesterday, <laughs> and I had a fast break. I had a fast break, and you can hear my teammate like, "Yo, throw it, throw it, throw it!" And I'm like, "Yeah, all right, you getting this? You getting this layup?" And I'm getting back on defense. I'm not mm. doing it no more. Mm. But it's funny. I was playing in the tournament in the summer, and in the layup line, all my teammates is going above the rim, boom, boom, dunking, dunking. I'm like. Yo, I'm not pussy, bro. I mm-hmm. went up there, dunked it. My man's in the crowd. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> he still got it. I was like, nah, don't hype me up. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even, I ain't even go up on the rim after that. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm good. So, That's fine. Yeah, man. And shout out to Miss Two Bs, man. Absolutely. I love you, sis. Miss you, <laughs> miss you. Uh, real quick, do you want to talk about something maniacal? What you want to talk about? Something maniacal. Like what? I've seen some reels recently from a from a certain Instagram page. Nah, we good. Uh, no, you don't want to talk about that? Okay. Not, right, not on never camera. Never mind, never mind, never mind. This guy is sick. If, if, if you know, you know. <laughs> so, this guy is with sick. that, for my brother, for Stay Busy Alumni, Stay Busy Family, oh, Kojo. Oh, shit. For, for the good guy, Will, uh, yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just trying to, I'm thinking about those, sli- oh, okay. <laughs> and for, for myself, the bald nigga bombshell, Holy we always shit. want y'all more than anything to stay safe, stay humble, and stay busy.